मुझे भी बहुत अच्छा लगा सर आपके दर्शन पहली बार हो रहे हैं सर मुझे बड़ा अच्छा लग रहा है थैंक यू सर नमस्कार सर सर साहब और ठीक है सर जी सर अब जुड़ गए अब शुरू करा दू मैं है ना टाइम पर क्योंकि फिर यस सर यस सर एक मिनट है हमारा लेकिन शुरू मेरी समझ से जी सर सी साहब आ गए हैं और चीफ गेस्ट हमारे हैं शुरू करवा दिया जाए थैंक यू सर गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल माननीय कुलपति महोदय उत्तराखंड मुक्त विश्वविद्यालय प्रोफेसर ओ पी एस नेगी सर आदरणीय मुख्य अतिथि डॉक्टर आर के सोनी निदेशक ए आई सी टी प्रोफेसर दुर्गेश पंत निदेशक कंप्यूटर विज्ञान एवं सूचना प्रौद्योगिकी विद्या शाखा एवं अन्य सभी विद्या शाखाओं के निदेशक प्रोफेसर एच एस लयाल कुल सचिव उत्तराखंड मुक्त विश्वविद्यालय व उपस्थित विशिष्ट अतिथियों वह सभी प्रतिभागियों का इस ऑनलाइन फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम जो कि ए अटल एकेडमी के सहयोग से आयोजित किया जा रहा है मैं हार्दिक स्वागत और अभिनंदन है यह फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम एडवांसेज ऑफ आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस एंड मशीन लर्निंग इन सोसाइटल डेवलपमेंट विषय पर आयोजित किया जा रहा है जो कि सोलह अगस्त से शुरू होकर बीस अगस्त को खत्म होगा इस फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम का आयोजन उत्तराखंड मुक्त विश्वविद्यालय हल्द्वानी द्वारा ए के सहयोग से किया जा रहा है उत्तराखंड मुक्त विश्वविद्यालय की स्थापना उत्तराखंड में मुक्त और दूरस्थ शिक्षा के माध्यम से ज्ञान और कौशल का प्रसार करने के उद्देश्य से की गई अपने दशकों लंबे अस्तित्व में उत्तराखंड मुक्त विश्वविद्यालय ने कई नए आयाम स्थापित किए हैं माननीय कुलपति महोदय प्रोफेसर ओ पी एस नेगी सर के कुशल नेतृत्व और मार्गदर्शन के तहत विश्वविद्यालय लगातार प्रगति कर रहा है विश्वविद्यालय ने छात्रों की संख्या को तेजी से बढ़ाने के साथ ही व्यवसायिक व अन्य पाठ्यक्रमों में विस्तार करने में कामयाबी हासिल की है कार्यक्रम को शुरू करते हुए मैं फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम के समन्वयक प्रोफेसर दुर्गेश पंत सर को स्वागत भाषण के लिए आमंत्रित करना चाहूंगा प्रोफेसर पंत इज अमंग द अर्लीस्ट एडेप्टर एंड पाइनियर ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी फॉर मोर देन थर्टी टू ही हैज बीन एन एबिट प्रमोटर ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड आई एट ऑल लेवल्स we welcome you sir for your valuable address uh sabhi ko uh, mera namaskar param adarni uh, shraddhe uh, manni kulpati ji aaj ke hamare uh, jo mukhya atithi hain chief guest of this fdp program professor r k soni main unka bahut swagat karta hu and it is so good to see him here and uh, especially uh, when he is spearheading this uh, Use, uh, initiative that is अटल और जो ए आई सी टी का जो ट्रेनिंग और लर्निंग की अकेडमी है इट इज इट इज इज अनिशियटिव टेकन बाई आई सी टी एंड थ्रू विच वी आर कंडक्टिंग दिस वर्कशॉप जो एफ डी पी प्रोग्राम है फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम है हमारे आज के जो कोर्डिनेटर हैं डॉक्टर आशुतोष भट्ट डॉक्टर जितेंद्र पांडे एंड directors of uh, schools different schools of uttarakhand open university and all those who have connected from across the country or uh, i have come to know that uh, there are about 200 participants attending this workshop which is uh, advances in artificial and machine learning and especially for uh, the welfare and well being of the human society for the societal development and our hamare registrar professor nayan main aap sabhi logon ka swagat karta hu because primarily ye inaugural session hai technical session iske baad shuru hoga aur kyunki it is a five day long program to hamare isme 14 lectures hain 14 lectures of consequence you will find this topic absolutely stimulating because most of the teachers they hail from the computer science and it background so they will find this is quite enriching because not only from the perspective of entire humanity which way it has moved forward to this date where we are standing today on 16th of august 2000 uh, this uh, 21 21st century 
and uh, this third decade how important uh, artificial intelligence has become this can uh, who who does not know the significance of ai and ml in today's world who does not know the significance of deep learning in today's world hamare haath ke mobile phone ho ya social media ho ya amazon ki khareedari ho hamari choices ho usse leke kya kuch aisa nahi hai which is not governed by it or in order to make india a formidable force in ai ml is the need of our aisa lagta hai and therefore we had started this initiative aur aapko acha lagega professor soni jan ke ki uttarakhand open university university ne and uh, under the leadership of uh, professor ps negi who is himself a physicist of international repute aur unka unhone bahut kaam ann aur neural networks mein karwaya hua hai to ye hamara aur उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी ने इन कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड आईटी इट हैज टेकन सेवरल इनिशिएटिव इन जो आईसीटी है इट हैपेंस टू बी अ वेरी वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग पिलर ऑफ उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम एडमिशन टू असेसमेंट सारी चीजें ऑटोमेटेड हैं हमारे वहाँ और इंडिजिनसली डेवलप्ड है एवरी सिंगल कोड एवरी लाइन हैज बीन डेवलप्ड बाई उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी आई सी टी डिपार्टमेंट एंड सेंटर और यही नहीं हमारे पास जो मूक्स हैं हमारे डॉक्टर जितेंद्र पांडे यहाँ पर हैं अभी हमारा जो साइबर सिक्योरिटी का मास्टर्स लेवल पे हम लोगों का साइबर सिक्योरिटी का प्रोग्राम है जो दूसरे प्रोग्राम है ट्रेडिशनल वो तो है ही लेकिन इसके बाद अभी अभी हमारा मूक पे फॉरेंसिक्स पे साइबर फॉरेंसिक डिजिटल फॉरेंसिक्स पे प्रोग्राम जो सबका के साथ चलाया जा रहा था वो अभी अभी समाप्त हुआ अटेंडेड बाय पीपल फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द वर्ल्ड इसी तरह से अलग अलग प्रोग्राम है विच वी है ऑलरेडी रनिंग अभी डिजिटल लैब बिकॉज इट इज द नीड ऑफ आर स्पेशली इन दिस वेरी डिफिकल्ट कोविड टाइम सो अभी एक डिजिटल लैब पे भी अभी कंप्यूटर साइंस और आई स्कूल अभी एक सेमका के साथ कर रहा है वेरी सोन दिस वर्कशॉप इज going to take place so uh, in a natural kyunki uh, abhi uh, program iske baad technical session shuru hoga aapko jaan ke acha lagega jitna jo mandate hai jis tarah se odl universities kaam karti hain usme kamal ka kaam uh, uttarakhand open university ka hai kyunki aap mein se bahut se we have participants from across the country aap iski site mein ja ke dekhe and you will find it so very enriching and uh, vocational program hamare ko vocational program technology enabled education tak ke hain jo develop kiye hue hain isi tarah se jo uh, attempt hai wo ye hai ki jo ai based data science ka bhi hum logon ne naya shuru kiya hai and we are uh, we are progressing you know towards introducing new programs idea has been to take uh, nation forward in terms of technology uh, based education kyunki usi se hum aage ko bahut kuch kar sakte hain aur uh, jo new education policy hai jisme hum computational intelligence ki baat karte hain usko bhi dhyan mein rakhte hue kulpati mahoday ka tha ki we should take it forward to koshish ki gayi hai kyunki odl based hai to we take always this privilege of you know connecting from different corner site and remote location so this has been the hallmark of uttarakhand open university because with you um, uh, it has been a long connect with you so it is it is always good to see you and especially when uh, you are there at the helm of aict especially this program so i once again welcome you and uh, to this uh, workshop we will take it forward and you will find it absolutely the kind of feedback you will be getting you know uh, at the end of this workshop afterwards i know for sure that is going to be stupendous and i once again welcome all the participants what they will find because it is all going to be an inter interactive session and starting from you know, you know from the beginning of ai ml to the the, the latest happening which are there i once again thank you all and a uh, 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 big thank you to the organizer of this workshop dr ashutosh bhat and registrar of the university uh, dr nayar thank you so much bahut bahut dhanyawad sir thank you very much thank you for your valuable idea on the subject uh ab main मुख्य अतिथि प्रोफेसर आर के सोनी निदेशक एआईसीटी का विश्वविद्यालय परिवार की ओर से स्वागत करता हूं डॉक्टर रवीन कुमार सोनी डायरेक्टर एआईसीटी ही इज प्रेजेंटली वर्किंग एज ए डायरेक्टर ई गवर्नेंस सेल ऑफ एआईसीटी हेडक्वार्टर न्यू दिल्ली एंड हैंडलिंग ऑल सॉफ्टवेयर 
application and automation at AICT and also handling AICT activities of Northwest Regional Chandigarh region Chandigarh. Before it, I was it, it was founder director of the AICT Training and Learning Academy at AICT headquarters. And in year 2020-21, the activities of Atal Academy become the world record. He has. Completed UK India Technical Relationship Program, did PhD from in management, Master of Business Administration, postgraduate diploma in International Business Management, MPhil in Physics, uh, MSc in Physics with specialization of the telecommunication, and he is awarded by Vice President of India for ERP logo contest of Igno. Uh, I welcome Professor R K Soni. सर मैं आपसे निवेदन करूंगा कि आप अपने विचारों से हमें अनुग्रहित करें थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी एंड थैंक यू फॉर गिविंग मी एन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू इंटरेक्ट विद यू ऑल फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल माय वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑनरेबल वाइस चांसलर प्रोफेसर ओपीएस नेगी साहब वंस मोर वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू यू सर एंड थैंक यू यू हैव गिवन अ चांस टू इंटरेक्ट विद यू एंड योर फैकल्टी योर डायरेक्टर एचओडीज एंड Uh, the participants in fact uh, the coordinator of uh, this program uh, dr dukesh panji uh, then uh, the professor nayal who is the registrar of uh, the university uh, dean faculty of uh, uttarakhand open university and uh, my dear participants uh, it's my pleasure and privilege in fact to interact with you all Uh, I'll be uh, passing on some of the information about Atal Academy as well as uh, uh, the the program. This particular uh, FDP on uh, uh, advances of artificial intelligence and uh, machine learning in societal development is highly relevant. In fact, as already mentioned by Dr. Pant, that this particular technology and the ICT is going to prevail. This is going to be a leading technology in the world, at least for the couple of decades. Uh, in the last ten years, a lot of development has already been taking place in uh, this area. and especially in education the personalized learning uh, is going to be a era of education the next decade in fact and therefore ai and ml is not only in uh, uh, industry rather in education also it's going to be a very uh, important uh, thank you for choosing this particular topic in fact this is a thrust area for ai ct a uh, ai ct took one study just four years ago constituted one committee and that committee or gave one recommendation that few technologies are to be promoted in the country so they named nine technologies ai is one of uh, those nine technologies so ai cyber security quantum com computing 3d printing and few more so they uh, they identified nine technologies they also recommended that only these courses i mean uh, courses on these areas to be approved this was a, a drastic uh, recommendation rather than say but aict accepted that aict started giving approval only in those areas so very surprising see all kind of uh, conventional uh, technological programs are there like in civil engineering mechanical computer and other uh, but aict decided that aict will give programs only in these areas for the new institutions so those who are interested to open new engineering colleges they can only open these colleges in these areas only including ai so that was the decision for last two years including this year no engineering college was opened in conventional areas that that was the decision and it is implemented it is also there those who wants to open new courses suppose existing engineering colleges are there they want to open new new branches those who want to increase the number increase the intake they are also forced they were also forced to take up these courses so that is uh, uh, the aict initiative for promoting these technologies however aict also identified some more emerging areas not only restricted to nine because uh, opening colleges opening courses only in these nine uh, nine areas may not suffice may not be the complete for development of the country and therefore we took further study what are other areas which are trust areas emerging areas in which uh, 
uh, courses can be opened, further studies were taken, and now in many emerging areas, only emerging areas courses are being approved. Question was, when these courses are approved in only emerging areas, who is going to teach? See, all are not uh, capable enough like that, uh, Professor Pant, who can uh, teach AI and ML. There are many faculty, those studies computer, computer science, IT, long back. They might have not studied AI and ML. And therefore, AICT took this responsibility in its own shoulder that the AICT will be training faculty across the country on those emerging areas. So uh, emerging areas in digital technologies, emerging areas in management, emerging areas in life management also, emerging areas in uh, uh, some other areas, computers, uh, whatever uh, programs are being regulated by AICT, AICT uh, identified emerging areas and around 100 emerging areas we identified. And now these faculty development program are being conducted in these 100 emerging areas major in nine digital technologies, which are prominent, including blockchain cybersecurity, as I mentioned. Because of uh, uh, this huge uh, scale, uh, this AICT Training and Learning Academy initiative was started uh, three years ago. Uh, in first year, uh, we experimented only with uh, five faculty de development program in these areas, because uh, we were just thinking, ki who will be the resource person? We identified uh, resource person, not resource person, other uh, institution. And across the country, all institutions, those who are having expertise, expertise in these emerging areas, including IIT, IIIT, NIT, and some other some other area, some other institution like CDAC, DRDO, ISRO. So we wrote in all these uh, institutions, requested them to train our faculty. After experiment, uh, experimental phase, uh, we conducted around 200 FDP in 1920. And FDP in India means always face to face. It was never online. It was uh, never this kind of uh, online. This pandemic forced us to go online. So 2021, we started conducting online uh, uh, faculty development program because the pandemic started last year in March. After March, uh, for some time, for two weeks, we halted our operation. And we were thinking what to do. But as you know that uh, whenever there is a problem, there is a solution. So this online uh, learning, teaching learning solution emerged these technologies were uh, existing earlier also, but we were not comfortable. There was psychological barrier, in fact. This COVID vanished psychological barrier. We, we are now comfortable. So we also started uh, this online faculty development program under Atal Initiative. We call it as AICT Training and Learning Atal Academy. Under that initiative, uh, we started this uh, faculty development program. Initially, we planned for 500 uh, FDP in 2021. But because of the huge response from coordinator side, from institution side, from participant side, we were forced to scale the activity. And then we planned 1000 FDP. We conducted 1000 FDP last year. And because of this 1000 uh, uh, FDP, uh, more than uh, 1.5 lakhs uh, students and faculty, there are three set of uh, participants, PG students, uh, research scholar and faculty, they can attend these programs. So uh, the 1.5 lakhs, more than 1.5 lakhs participants attended those programs and that become a world record. We never thought of, we never worked for the world record. We were working for a promoter of these technologies for emerging areas, but somehow this world book of record, uh, London came to us and told that this activity is a world, uh, world record. So why don't you uh, ask us to recognize that? Uh, we asked them to welcome. I asked them welcome, and then uh, they recognize this activity as a world record. This year, we increased further. Around 1,500 uh, faculty development program are going to be conducted uh, this year in 21-22, and all these are online. Some more uh, institutions were roped in. If I talk about the relation between uh, open universities and AICT, it had been weak earlier, but now it is stronger, going to be stronger more in coming year. We are now uh, building relations with open universities also, including uh, the giant university, uh, Indira Gandhi National Open University. They are also conducting this kind of FDP. And I'm happy to see that uh, uh, the FDP on this particular uh, topic, advances of artificial intelligence and machine learning in uh, societal uh, development, is really very good. When open universities conducting uh, FDPs on this, I think uh, 
It's a matter of pleasure. We are thank you so. Thank you to uh, uh, Uttarakhand Open University for connecting this FDP. In fact, this year I just, uh, uh, I'll just take a minute. I'll just take a minute and then finish it off. Uh, I just wanted to uh, this, I share that uh, this year it is 1,500 FDPs are going to uh, going to finish, and every Monday today also there are many programs starting, and all these programs are uh, inaugurated centrally from uh, AICTE. Uh, in fact, uh, this AICT Training and Learning Academy is not the only initiative which AICT is running. There are several initiative, and initiative of this scale. One particular initiative is like uh, uh, initiative of one organization, and ar around 20 such uh, initiatives are being run by AICTE. So some mega activities are going on. I'll not take much time. My colleague uh, already intervened, uh, and therefore I'll uh, uh, start with a few words here. Uh, from my core of heart, I like to congratulate to the coordinator because it is not at all easy to grab Hotel Academy FDP. In fact. Out of 6,000 uh, applications, this was selected, and therefore the congratulations to congratulations to the coordinator, to the depart to the department, and to the university too. This particular FDP is going to build further relation, stronger relation between uh, AICT and uh, Uttarakhand Open University. Yesterday, day for yesterday only, we came out that Open Universities can apply for NOC from AICTE for uh, the programs which are being regulated by AICTE. So uh, now uh, open universities will also come to AICT for NOC. AICT will be happy to give the NOC and then uh, they can go to uh, UG for further for approval. So this kind of uh, official uh, uh, relation is, will also be there with uh, all open universities across the country. So with this note, so thank you so much. Thank you so much for inviting me for this particular FDP in our session. I just wanted to mention over here uh, for last one, one month, I'm not looking after AICT training and Le learning academy. Rather, I'm looking after uh, e-governance of AICTE, where the software of Atal Academy, as well as software of all other initiatives and AICTE looked after by this particular section. So uh, we are having we're sharing a little more uh, responsibilities now. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. I'm just stopping here only. Thank you. Thank you very much. Because ultimately, e-governance and software that controls and runs everything. So good to good to have you again in that position. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for enlightening the participants in the faculty development program under AICT training and learning Atal Academy with your word of wisdom. Ab main Manni Kulpati Mohde, Uttarakhand Muktip Shivyalay, Professor OPS Negi sir ko adhyakshi bhashan ke liye amantrit karna chahunga. Honorable Professor Negi has already been professor in Department of Physics, Kumo University. He has more than 250 research paper in the Journal of International Repute. His research area is high energy physics, quantum field theory, and other related emerging fields. He has over 37 years of experience in teaching and research. He has been DART, UNESCO TWAS fellow, and fellow of Chinese Academic Exchange. We welcome you, sir, for your valuable address and blessing. I will Kulpati you that I will tell 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 और आप सभी का धन्यवाद आज के दिन के मुख्य अतिथि प्रोफेसर आर के सोनी साहब डायरेक्टर ऑफ ऑल इंडिया काउंसिल ऑफ टेक्निकल एजुकेशन एआईसीटी हमारे मित्र प्रोफेसर दुर्गेश पंजी डायरेक्टर ऑफ स्कूल ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी विभिन्न विद्या शाखाओं के निदेशक गण विश्वविद्यालय के कुल सचिव प्रोफेसर एच एस नयाल जी प्रोग्राम कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर आशुतोष जी डॉक्टर जितेंद्र पांडे पार्टिसिपेंट्स एक्सपर्ट्स जो भी इसमें आए हुए हैं सभी 
का स्वागत करता हूं सभी का अभिनंदन करता हूं खासकर मैं अभिभूत हूं और अभिनंदन करता हूं प्रोफेसर आर के सोनी साहब का जिन्होंने अपना अमूल्य समय देकर हमें किरदार किया हम लोगों के लिए ए के पास जाना ही एक पत्र भेजना बहुत बड़ी बात होती है और ए के डायरेक्टर हमसे बात करें तो हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ी गर्व की बात है थैंक यू वेरी मच सर आपने अपना टाइम दिया बहुत अच्छी बहुत अच्छी खुशी हुई और उत्तराखंड मुक्त विश्वालय की तरफ से मैं आपका स्वागत करता हूं तथा तो पुनः पुनः आपका आभार व्यक्त करता हूं कोविड 19 ने ऐसा कोई क्षेत्र न हो जिसको कि छुआ न हो जिसके कारण से भारत की चाहे इकोनॉमिक व्यवस्था हो चाहे सामाजिक व्यवस्था हो चाहे पोलिटिकल व्यवस्था हो चाहे टेक्निकल व्यवस्था हो चाहे कोई भी हो प्रोग्रेस हो एक तरह से देखा जाए रुकने के तरफ सॉल्यूशन दिखाई दिया तो एआईसीटी के जैसे जॉइंट लोग हैं या जो भी टेक्निकल है मींस केवल डिजिटल सॉल्यूशन से एक सबसे बड़ी संभवनी और स्थिति है कि जहां अन्य सब क्षेत्र धराशायी हो गए उसमें केवल डिजिटल लर्निंग या नए इनोवेशन जो कहिए यही काम आए और इसको ये कहते हैं डिजिटल वेलबींग ही काम आई अगर डिजिटल वेलबींग नहीं होती तो शायद जो है ये सिस्टम कुछ भी नहीं रखता जहां आज तक हमेशा हमें तो हमेशा कहता हूं कि अभिमन्यु का हाथ काट दो और जुन को आगे बढ़ा दो ये हमेशा परंपरा रही है लेकिन कोरोना ने सिखा दिया कि अभिमन्यु और जुन में भेद नहीं करना चाहिए सभी को साथ लेके चलना चाहिए नई शिक्षा नीति 2020 जो आई है उसमें पहली बार जो है एक यूनिवर्सलाइजेशन ऑफ द एजुकेशन कहा गया है और इनक्लूसिव एजुकेशन बात की गई है जिसमें कि सभी एजुकेशन हो जाए सारी शिक्षाओं का समावेश किया जाए कोई अछूता न रहे ओपन यूनिवर्सिटीज पहले से एक्सेस टू एवरीबडी कहते हैं हम लोगों का सिस्टम थ्री ए पे रहा है एनी बडी एनी टाइम एनी वेयर हम लोग न तो छोटे बड़े की परवाह करते हैं न हम ये कहते हैं कौन पीडोल्डीज है कौन जो है डिसेबल पर्सन है कौन आपका ट्रांसजेंडर है सभी को हम लोगों में समावेशी शिक्षा की बात पहले से ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी रही है और आज अच्छी बात है कि नई शिक्षा नीति में ओपन एंड डिजिटल लर्निंग को महत्व दिया गया है वो अलग बात है कि ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी के बारे में पूरी शिक्षा नीति कहीं भी कुछ नहीं कहती है लेकिन ओपन एंड डिजिटल लर्निंग को बहुत महत्व तो दिया गया है आज ईआई की बात करी है मुझे याद है मैं एक बार पुणे में था तो प्रोफेसर पेनरो जिन्होंने जो कि नोबल प्राइज विनर हैं उन्होंने कहा था कि ह्यूमन माइंड कंप्यूटर कैन नॉट कम्प्यूट विद्यूमन माइंड ह्यूमन माइंड से कभी कंप्यूटर को नहीं कर सकता है लेकिन आज ए की जो टेक्निक जो नाइनटीन के आसपास जो लोगों ने बात की थी वो ए आई टी टेक्निक में के आ रहा है कि हम कैसे कंप्यूटर को भी अपने जैसे बुद्धिमान बनाते हैं कैसे कंप्यूटर से बात कर सकते हैं किस तरह से हम कंप्यूटर को सही को कंप्यूटर हमारी लैंग्वेज को पढ़ सकता है हमारे आइडियाज को पढ़ सकता है कंप्यूटर हमसे चाहता क्या है ये ए आई टेक्निक्स आ गई है और एक स्वागत योग्य कदम है और इस ए आई टेक्निक को अगर हम लोग जान लें तो ऐसा तो शायद मैंने समझता कोई क्षेत्र रहेगा कोई फील्ड रहेगा जिसमें कि हम लोग उन्नत न कर सकें और इसको एक कहते हैं कि ए और टेक्निक एंड मशीन लर्निंग ये नीड ऑफ द आवर्स है अगर ये नहीं रहेगा तो हम लोग जो है आगे नहीं बढ़ पाएंगे और ओपन यूनिवर्सिटीज के लिए तो हम लोग तो ओपन तो अलग समझा जाता है लेकिन हम लोग तो हमेशा तीन बिंदुओं पर काम करते हैं इनोवेशन टेक्नोलॉजी और क्वालिटी ये अपने में ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी का इनोवेशन है कि नई नई टेक्निक को आप घर बैठे प्राप्त कर सकते हैं वो इंस्टीट्यूशन जहां पर काम करते हैं वहां पर कुछ दिन का कार्यक्रम है उस दिन वहां पर कुछ ट्रेनिंग लीजिएगा बाकी जो है ऑनलाइन आप कर सकते हैं और मुझे खुशी है कि हमारे निदेशक प्रोफेसर दुर्गेश पंत उनके साथी डॉक्टर आशुतोष भट्ट डॉक्टर जितेंद्र पांडे और अन्य टीम इसमें अपना पूरा योगदान दे रहे हैं आज ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी हम लोग पूरे हम लोग उत्तराखंड की बात करें तो किसी भी यूनिवर्सिटी किसी भी कॉलेज में विश्वविद्यालय में छात्र छात्रों के प्रैक्टिकल्स नहीं कराया गया साइंस में भी मैं फिजिक्स का विद्यार्थी हूँ मैंने पूछा कहीं प्रैक्टिकल हो कहीं कुछ नहीं हुआ ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी ने ऑनलाइन प्रैक्टिकल वर्चुअल प्लेटफॉर्म पर प्रैक्टिकल करा करके एक्सपेरिमेंट कराया जाए और हम लोगों ने सिमका के सहयोग से हम कोशिश कर रहे हैं कि वर्चुअल लैब डेवलप हो जाए ताकि कम से कम हम लोग जो ऑनलाइन में जो डिस्टेंस में जो एजुकेशन दे रहे हैं उनको कभी कभी प्रैक्टिकल करने के द्वारा हमारी लैब कैपेसिटी जुड़ सके ये प्रश्न रहे कि कोई आदमी कहाँ पर है और हर आदमी शिक्षित कर सके तो ये देखा जाए तो ए आई जो आज का नीड ऑफ आवर है फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम किसी भी विश्वविद्यालय का एक तरह से मेन एक कह सकते हैं कि आगे बढ़ने का एक पहला तरीका होता है अगर 
फिर तो अगर विश्वविद्यालय के शिक्षक शिक्षित नहीं होंगे नई नई टेक्निक नहीं सीखेंगे तो कैसे काम करेंगे तो यही जो नए टेक्निकल जो आपका फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम है खासकर ए के टर्म में मुझे उम्मीद है कि ये मील का पत्थर साबित होगा उत्तराखंड ओपन यूनिवर्सिटी के इतिहास में ये मील का पत्थर साबित होगा ओपन एंड डिस्टेंस लर्निंग को ये मील का पत्थर साबित होगा ए आई और यूजीसी को सोचने में कि ओपन यूनिवर्सिटीज को या ओपन एंड डिस्टेंस लर्निंग को भी एट पार उसी तरह से बढ़ावा देना चाहिए जिस तरह से हम फेस टू फेस को बढ़ा रहे अधिक न कर करके मैं पुनः पुनः प्रोफेसर आर के सोनी साहब का स्वागत करता हूँ आपका धन्यवाद करता हूँ और आप सभी लोगों का भी धन्यवाद आप लोगों से जुड़े सभी प्रतिभागियों से मेरा निवेदन है कि अच्छी तरह से इसको देखें क्योंकि ये अगर थोड़ा भी आप स्किप कर जाएंगे समझ में नहीं आएगा और ये इसमें आपको मजा आएगा आप देखेंगे कि आप नए नए आए तो सीखेंगे ही आप लोगों को घर घर ए आई की टेक्निक पहुंचाने में भी काम आएगा तो अधिक ना करके अपनी वाणी को मैं यही विराम देता हूँ बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच और पुनः पुनः आपका स्वागत जय हिंद जय भारत जय उत्तराखंड बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद सर थैंक यू वेरी मच सर यू आर इन साइक्लोपीडिया ऑफ नॉलेज एंड थैंक यू वंस अगेन सर अब मैं कार्यक्रम के अंत में धन्यवाद प्रस्ताव देने के लिए प्रोफेसर एच एस नयाल रजिस्ट्रार उत्तराखंड मुक्त विश्वविद्यालय को आमंत्रित करना चाहूंगा सभी सम्मानित जनों का सादर अभिवादन आज के कार्यक्रम के मुख्य अतिथि प्रोफेसर आर के सोनी जी डायरेक्टर ऑल इंडिया काउंसिल फॉर टेक्निकल एजुकेशन ए हमारे विश्वविद्यालय के माननीय कुलपति प्रोफेसर ओ पी एस निधि जी प्रोफेसर दुर्गेश पंजी डायरेक्टर स्कूल ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड आईटी, डिफरेंट स्कूल के डायरेक्टर्स अन्य सम्मानित प्राध्यापक गण इस कार्यक्रम के कोऑर्डिनेटर डॉक्टर आशुतोष भट्ट डॉक्टर जितेंद्र पांडे उनके समस्त सहयोगी ऑनलाइन माध्यम से उपस्थित सभी प्रतिभागियों का इस पांच दिवसीय फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट प्रोग्राम जो कि ऑल इंडिया काउंसिल फॉर टेक्निकल एजुकेशन के सहयोग से आयोजित किया जा रहा है मैं सम्मिलित होने के लिए आप सभी का हार्दिक धन्यवाद एवं आभार मैं विशेष रूप से हमारे मुख्य अतिथि प्रोफेसर आर के सोनी साहब के प्रति आभार एवं कृतज्ञता व्यक्त करता हूँ क्योंकि आप अपने व्यस्तम कार्यक्रमों के बावजूद हमारे बीच उपस्थित हुए और अपने मूल्यवान व उत्साहजनित विचारों से हम सभी का मार्गदर्शन किया हमें आशा है कि भविष्य में भी आपका सहयोग एवं मार्गदर्शन हमें इसी तरह मिलता रहेगा मैं उत्तराखंड विश्वविद्यालय परिवार की ओर से एक बार पुनः सभी सम्मानित अतिथियों का आभार व्यक्त करता हूं और संचालन समिति के सभी सदस्यों को कार्यक्रम की सफलता के लिए शुभकामनाएं देता हूँ धन्यवाद थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच सर नाउ वी आर प्रोसीडिंग टू द नेक्स्ट टेक्निकल सेशन पार्ट ऑफ दिस फाइव डे लॉन्ग एफ बी पी वी हैव बीन थ्री टेक्निकल सेशन इन ईच डे आई होप डेलीगेट विल इंजॉय द प्रेजेंटेशन एंड डिस्कशन डेट आर गोइंग टू टेक प्लेस इन द नेक्स्ट टेक्निकल सेशन तो सभी पार्टिसिपेंट से निवेदन है कि वो इसी लिंक पर रहें क्योंकि अगला टेक्निकल सेशन हम इसी लिंक पे स्टार्ट करेंगे और दूसरी सूचना यह है कि 11 बजे से हमारा ए का कंबाइंड इनोगुलर सेशन होना है तो अभी 11 बजे तक टेक्निकल सेशन हमारा जारी रहेगा और 11 बजे से यू आपके जो व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप बना है पार्टिसिपेंट का उसमें एक यूट्यूब लिंक दिया हुआ है आप सभी लोग उसी लिंक से कनेक्ट होंगे और कनेक्ट होने के बाद फिर से वापस इसी लिंक में आप जुड़ जाएंगे तो YouTube पे कंबाइंड इनोगल फंक्शन है जिसमें सभी पार्टिसिपेंट को शामिल होना है थैंक यू सो मच सर जस्ट अलाउ मी टू लीव इफ इफ यू डोंट माइंड थैंक यू रेगी साहब रजिस्ट्रार साहब पन साहब एंड अस्तो साहब थैंक यू सो मच थैंक्स थैंक यू now i hand over the session to resource person of first technical session respected professor dinesh pal sir director school of computer science and ict sir please over to professor pal sir professor changes uh 
आशुतोष जी मैं आई आई जस्ट लॉग आउट फॉर अ वाइल अगेन आई आई रीकनेक्ट बिकॉज़ आई आई शेयर माय स्क्रीन सो इट विल बी वन मिनट ओनली सो दैट वी विल कंपेंसेट दिस आई आई जस्ट रीकनेक्ट इन द टाइम पत्रपंक आई आई जस्ट will connect uh, some mandatory condition for the certificate this is the important condition for the participant uh, the e certificate shall be awarded by aict for fdp is subject to 80% attendance and minimum 60% of marks in fdp quiz at the end of final session after successful completion the certificate shall be available to download from atal portal via participant login at atal academy portal so uh, uh, we will send one attendance link after each session after each technical session we will send one attendance link in the whatsapp group of the participant so you have to fill uh, that attendance link uh, as well as feedback link so as per uh, this uh, attendance we will uh, send the attendance to aict and as per the attendance uh, the certificate will be provided to the candidate so uh, this is very important condition so uh, i think all participant uh, has received this information uh, previously by the aict so uh, you have to be in this link so till the uh, till professor pant will start the session and after after uh, the session of professor pant the next session Uh, will be taken by professor abhay saxena uh, from dev sanskriti vishwavidyalay haridwar to aap sabhi ko is session pe abhi bane rehna hai aur 11 baje se combined inaugural program hai jo ki aict dwara aayojit kiya ja raha hai aap sabhi log whatsapp group mein diye hue youtube link mein aise jud jayenge usko usse connect honge और जैसे ही इनोगल प्रोग्राम कंबाइन इनोगल प्रोग्राम ए का खत्म होता है तो वापस फिर से आप इस जून लिंक पे जुड़ जाएंगे ताकि जो फर्स्ट टेक्निकल सेशन है वो कंटिन्यू होगा तो 11 बजे से आपका ब्रेक रहेगा इनोगल प्रोग्राम के थैंक यू is it uh, seen now yes sir my screen is uh, visible yes sir your screen is visible yes sir visible okay <laughs> good morning uh, to you all actually so the um, change of uh, the system so good morning to you all and uh, it sir, has... please make it full screen yes sir so, uh, this is about ai and ml and especially uh, in the in the in the present day scenario and how it is uh, you know it is it is it is so very conducive for the overall societal development what all can be done what are the dimensions how it has emanated where from it has come so we will uh, discuss all these issues and uh, while uh, we discuss all these issues 
and uh, let me also take into account this journey that we have taken uh, all through. And since um, AI, be it AI, so ultimately uh, this intelligence is the part of our 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 basic, you know, this entire journey that we have taken up. So in computer science, we call it a bit, bit bang. It is not big bang. We, we say it is big bang, but uh, kind of, uh, you know, this uh, little tweak the computer science I eat people give, they call it Big Bang. So because the moment universe got created and uh, it is started, you know, taking shape. So uh, Big Bang uh, also happened. And interestingly, and because we know uh, the planet Earth came about uh, 4.6 billion years back and uh, the life on Earth, uh, the life on uh, as such came uh, billions of years back but this homo sapiens and homo nins they were there for last about 300,000 years so they were typical like homo nins however we are fast proceeding towards the cyber nins we call them now because it is a cyber world connected world and internet based world so it is all like this so what has really uh, taken up uh, to all these issues how have we emerged to this situation how have uh, homo nins uh, somehow to up to this uh, this intelligence see uh, because uh, what they had they had um, uh, they, 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 they saw all around and they had everything so um, it has been like this there was wind there was fire there was water and everything was there so he must have looked around looked around means again this is observation part so looking around is observation He must have struggled in the meanwhile because he must have conflicts and we also have conflicts in any any place any organization and uh, geopolitical situation to anything there are conflicts so he must have also had this situation he must have observed what the speed of different animals and sharp claws the wings of you know so that our ancestor he he, he must have observed all these things all these features all these traits, all these attributes. So it must have been there. And he must have identified, identified the need for survival. We know the, the, the kind of journey uh, we have gone through. So Neanderthals to this and all those uh, different, um, you know, they, 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 these ones, they came, they diminished. Again, those who survived, they could survive because they could identify all these. They they could identify the need and uh, they could somehow uh, know the art of survival and he discovered and designed what tools and he could also discover fire that led to power energy and similarly metal wheels so these were the tools he identified and uh, he could do all that and in the meanwhile, you fulfilled his needs. And what were those needs? And uh, this is all happening during the course of this, uh, this entire voyage that uh, we have, uh, the um, human beings have passed through. So uh, he must have uh, fulfilled his needs or he, he, he could have uh, encountered, you know, this uh, hunger, need for shelter or clothes. So he could have done it. And he must have learned, he must have learned from experience he must have seen it once something happens so must have experienced it in the second time round he would have just desisted from doing it if it was harmful so this thing must have gone and for machine learning for ai for computing for anything for that matter these experiences do matter of all algorithms are ultimately based on all those natural phenomena from nature we learn so much entire computing you know full of we talk about trees we talk about forest we, we talk about ants, we, we so so many nomenclatures, terms, you know, we, we take from nature because ultimately it is there that we have learned all through, all across. 
And one very important thing that is again part and parcel of this trial and error, this is trial and error. So again, in our all um, algorithms, in all our, uh, you know, this uh, learning algorithms, in our uh, neural networks, there are artificial neural networks, CNN. So what is happening, this is, and especially this reinforcement learning. So what is happening, it is trial and error. So that man was doing it all through, all across. And it is not today's phenomenon that, that uh, we are witnessing. He must have learned it in, uh, the hard way. So it was, it was, it it has been going on, and through trial and error, and then experimenting with one of those things. Maybe it was with regard to his, uh, you know, his uh, in order to fulfill his. Uh, a need which was for hunger and for shelter or anything else so he must have learned so this is something very important which has gone ahead and then he documented why human beings um, are important and as a species why what wonderful you know um, this is one thing and uh, which could uh, help you know homo sapiens in dominating the entire uh, spectrum of uh, this uh, civilization it is because of this documentation part the documentation again the essence of any 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 code writing anything that we do be it uh, you know be it our scriptures be it uh, this printing press even before our ancestors were writing, printing press came sometime in 1456, as we know, Gutenberg, he did it. And after that, Gutenberg, again, happens to be um, such an important OER repository also. If you Google it, you will find out. So Gutenberg, who initiated this uh, printing press movement. So, um, and in fact, it was one of the reasons why Europe did so very well during all those mid um, 20s years, that millennium. It was because of this documentation part. So documentation is very important. And our earlier men, they were doing it in terms of oral traditions, written documents, and so on and so forth. And the story uh, goes on. The story goes on in terms of uh, how uh, this... Uh, uh, Homo sapien, uh, he, 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 he evolved and he improvised. So this story is on. Now the Homo sapien, because uh, Homo sapien, a, a, as we know, and, and all of uh, you know, that we are uh, Homo sapien sapiens. And why this Homo sapien, if you Google it, it's a Latin term, and it means it's a wise man. And who is a wise man? Why, why we call it uh, Homo sapiens wise? Because it is leading to intelligence. And while we talk about artificial intelligence, we need to know this connect, because who is wise? One who, who is having the knowledge or experience to make uh, good, you know, or sensible decisions because ultimately decisions and judgments are important. So one who does uh, these things, these decisions and judgment, he is wise. Similarly, one very, very important attribute that goes to intelligence is one who learns Unlearn also. If there is this time round where this, you know, the, this is a time we say many a times it is obsolete, it is no longer required. So we say they got to be unlearned. And similarly, there is one more, uh, the, uh, this uh, trait is there. This happens to be relearn because when there is learning, so again, unlearning is also important and relearning is also important. This is again part of that experiential journey for learning so 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 that thing happens and again part of and who is wise and uh, who, who, who 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 needs it it is who imbibes adaptive learning as per the, the environment as per the surroundings and as per you know the the environment around so th th that is important and that also leads to evolution i mean the, that evolution part and in computing also we have evolutionary computing at times in soft computing we we talk about all those um, we, we take up all those issues so this is understanding from the past and learning uh, for you know to 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 take it forward so therefore intelligence intelligence 
again, because this is a cognitive prowess. Human beings have this cognitive uh, system. We, we, we call this, this, this brain and this, uh, uh, our Honorable Vice Chancellor, he was referring to a book, you know, during the inaugural session. He was referring to this book by Rosa Penrose and Emperor's New Mind. This Emperor's New Mind, the, the, this also talks about it. Though uh, Roger Penrose has been a person who, who advocated weak intelligence and he always believed because he's a mathematician, you know, last year he was conferred with the Nobel Prize. So um, important thing being because this cognitive system, it is, uh, it's very, very, I mean, the, 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 this is something unique with the human beings and uh, cognition, it is nothing, you know, the process of knowing and process of knowing when this process of knowing that, that this is done. So understanding becomes, understanding happens and say this, uh, ability to understand this ability to understand which is with we human beings it is then it leads to intelligence and then it is intelligence learn and think so this thinking is again this um, this is uh, associated with uh, this our cognition our cognitive system so this takes into account intelligence In our, this entire uh, journey, we have uh, had all these uh, waves, as we know, because for 10,000 years or so, we talk, uh, we, we had this agriculture wave, and we had this uh, industrial wave. And we know that because this industrial wave, we are in the midst of this fourth industrial revolution, as we say these days, this 21st century, and this fourth industrial revolution is, it has uh, become uh, so, I mean, it is, it is overpowering, it is over writing because um, this is uh, you know uh, we are taking into account physical world physical world which is all around us cyber world which is the digital world and the biological world because these days biologists and computer scientists they are working hand in hand and one very interesting book which has recently come and especially during these pandemic time this uh, book is this is the code breaker and this uh, code breaker is uh, nothing but um, uh, this CRISPR and this CRISPR is Jennifer uh, Doudna I mean uh, she was again conferred with the Nobel Prize as we know for CRISPR and which is for gene editing and uh, the gene editing is uh, extremely extremely uh, revolutionary that has happened and why it is so uh, important because gene editing if we get to know and if we are doing this part so for all disease element to this thing so uh, gene gene engineering we are doing, gene treatment we are doing, and if there is any kind of disease anywhere, so it can be taken care of, meaning thereby, if we have, and uh, why um, uh, for this uh, part of fourth industrial revolution we are doing, or, uh, you know, in 21st century we were doing, because now we have faster machines, we have high performance based machines. Earlier we had machines, earlier we had ideas, but since we did not have, I mean, that kind of, uh, you know, fast uh, performing machines, high speed uh, computing system, therefore we could not do this. So Moore's law again, Moore's law is again in practice. So, um, and uh, we all know about Moore's law and Moore's, uh, Gordon Moore. And in the maybe 50s, uh, he, he, he gave this Moore's law. And when he said, uh, you know, 18 months time uh, speed of uh, our, this, um, this number of, uh, number of transistors and uh, on, a, on, a, on a particular chip that will is double up, his speed will double up. So that kind of uh, this Moore's law, he, he gave and uh, this is in uh, in continuous continuity to the amazement of everyone so it was there but it's still since for all those biological computations for everything we did not have that kind of a speed and therefore we could not take up but now deep learning machine learning and artificial intelligence and all those expert systems and through all those data mining extraction classifications so we are making use of all those tools and therefore 
now we are in a position to do so many uh, calculations which are generally you know with this is beyond the capacity of uh, we human beings so uh, this industrial wave this led to because this led from the 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 uh, this um, this uh, mid of or late of 18th century and this has been continuing you know uh, till today so uh, this um, this is about the, the this information wave industrial wave so part of it and information wave you know this uh, 20th century we witnessed it we call it information technology because this is uh, it has it has swept across it has just swept across the entire planet and when internet came now we know it never happened in the history of mankind that uh, you know uh, billions of people are connected so it is uh, something uh, something uh, most as astonishing thing and uh, internet happens to be uh, the, one of the biggest inventions that mankind has uh, ever witnessed so it has happened because of uh, this information wave this informatics which uh, took place so uh, these are the things and primarily the factors are the mind this emperor's new mind i referred to uh, by uh, roger penrose this so the mind happens to be the most important element it is the mind's power software is nothing but the mind's power muscle is again because it has dictators in terms of muscle uh, there is power uh, i am not referring to you know uh, these days uh, very very important uh, and very disturbing um, uh, disturbing trends are there geopolitically especially in our neighborhood so uh, then, then this is again brute muscle power so how to take uh, how to take care of it again that happens to be uh, some thing very very important similarly money factor or oh, how on this landscape of the entire uh, planet money factor has taken you know this uh, this um, supremacy role so that is important and in order to make our country you know in in, in terms of we say we are uh, we can do this and we, we can do uh, magnificent thing but these factors economically how Uh, well uh, we can do so uh, that is extremely extremely important similarly mind's power mind's power if you want to reap mind's power we got to give uh, credence to uh, such 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 initiatives and such initiatives like you know mind's power is again ai we if we uh, make use of artificial intelligence we 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 make use of machine learning and all those trends because ultimately The, these things the supremacy the supremacy will be decided by all these factors so it is there and a brief i will give a brief brief example brief uh, introduction of uh, and the, the, these four and then we will get on to uh, this the, the, this part because uh, because in successive sessions you will get to know about it how ai and ml and to this date of uh, quantum artificial intelligence how uh, the, this entire trend has progressed so you will get to know about uh, all these different issues so uh, the first uh, this industrial uh, revolution which was uh, 18th century very interesting part is around same time only um, the, the the father of computing charles babbage and he was born and about 200 years back when he gave us this this analytical engine so it was during this time only so there is a correlation between what was happening in um, in england that time so this um, this um, uh, steam power james watt something is happening and computing is going hand in hand it is now taking shape it is taking root it is getting established and it is it is coming like this so it continued like this in uh, 18th century and continue 19th century where electric car comes all the addition and when this entire then this thing ge general electric came into existence the 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 the, 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 the genius of thomas alva edison was not that uh, because of electricity but he this uh, genius has been there because he could also think in terms of distributing 
that electricity and this is for mass production as to how what he can do so uh, this thing and again computing is taking shape during all those times so 19th century and all those and starting from our analytical to this and different theories are coming and Boolean algebra to, I mean all those things are happening it's a very very crucial time especially with regard to computing and electric uh, systems and the third wave subsequently it is coming 20th century and which we know it is a digital revolution so digital revolution uh, this uh, gave idea to um, this entire electronics and it to automation systems and uh, this uh, we, we know this ENIAC and all of, all those big machines during uh, this uh, mid 20th century they came so this um, third industrial revolution is again so very closely intertwined with the you know this um, uh, it and computing and uh, but during this time only the this automation and everything took place and now we are leading to uh, this time which we say this is a time of 21st century and the most i mean the biggest most disruptive and the most profound of all uh, revolutions that this is fourth industrial revolution which which, which we are currently in and which is, uh, you know, where, where it, is, it is merging of all those uh, computational power, biological power, and so much is happening, especially for all our participants, for all teachers. It is a wonderful opportunity because now is the time when biology, and especially for data science, there is no biology, there is no psychology. At time, it is cognitive science, this is behavioral science, this is psychological science, this is... Uh, the sociology can also be taken into account. So all those things, and because it lives on data, it lives on inferences, it, uh, and the data is the new fuel. And when it is new fuel, it does mean that data can do wonders. So how much we are generating, and from my wristwatch, which is giving me, you know, time to this, to pulse rate, to everything, the number of steps I have covered. So now it has become extremely vital. So all those things since are closely closely uh, uh, closely intertwined and therefore this um, present one this 21st century it be it becomes very very important and it becomes uh, absolutely uh, absolutely indispensable with regard to taking up new studies uh, strategies see uh, machines versus human and while this uh, discussion, because uh, whenever there is artificial intelligence and uh, this thing, all those machines, so this is always taken into account as to how machinery, uh, you know, this uh, this can, machinery can uh, somehow outperforms us in various ways. Can, can it? Because uh, it can outperform because we have our physical limitations, cars can overrun us, planes can fly, we can't. And uh, so the, 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 there are so many things. So now the potent question comes before this AI thing that uh, is thinking only our uh, human uh, prerogative. Is it only with us that uh, the, the, this thing, this uh, uh, thinking is there? Or can mechanical devices any day, can they, can they outthink us? Will, it, uh, will there be a day when um, this is going to be, you know, when the, the, they, they can outperform us? So uh, it is, uh, it is uh, something of a consequence. Uh, Ashutoshji. Yes, sir. Uh, is it uh, uh, is it uh, fine? Well, well, because you, you can find out, you can always intervene. Yes, sir. In... Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, you, we should give this break for a half an hour. When, when is when is the national this thing is starting? Sir, from eleven to eleven thirty. And what's the time? It is. Sir, this is eleven. This sir, is eleven. Bajke hai, abhi. And at this, the, the, this slide, then we will uh, we will take a break. So, uh, is this going to be? Is this only our prerogative? 
only uh, can, can machines like machines can um, machines can fly they can outrun us they can do so many things this wristwatch can do so much for me so can they also think so this thinking and there comes this man who is behind this artificial intelligence and the entire and the salutations to that man because for we computing people he is like to me i i i i really salute him and uh, he is uh, none other than the great man and the, the, the this great man is uh, alan turing and this uh, man alan turing and uh, as uh, you must have you must have uh, uh, known this uh, uh, turing test and uh, turing machine so uh, he happens to be a person who 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 who, who could uh, think you know during uh, those times about whether machines can think and about ai in uh, 1950 and around this time he wrote a seminal paper and it was about this can computers think or can machines think and that gave the mccarthy came mccarthy in uh, you know this uh, darmouth college and they, they they talked in terms of artificial intelligence and in uh, 1956 and there, were, there was a workshop but primarily uh, thanks to that man because uh, not only he talked in terms of uh, uh, you know giving this uh, this whole idea that can we give thinking we are saying can machines think means can machines become intelligent means if machines uh, we are saying can machines become in intelligent it means are we trying to say that uh, can machines be artificial intelligent artificial intelligent machines can be made so uh, that finally led to because the term was given by mccarthy so it uh, subsequently it picked up but uh, uh, this thing is there so uh, as uh, dr bhat was saying we will we will take a break because this national uh, uh, convention is on and uh, this inauguration so uh, dr bhat can you make this announcement please yes sir hmm. yes sir sabhi uh, participants se nivedan hai ki wo YouTube में दिए हुए लिंक में कनेक्ट हो जाएं। YouTube का लिंक दिया हुआ है WhatsApp ग्रुप में और जिन लोगों को WhatsApp ग्रुप में शामिल नहीं है उन्हें सभी को मेल भेजी हुई है उस मेल में आप लिंक क्लिक कर लें तो जिससे आप WhatsApp ग्रुप में आ जाएं ताकि आपके पास इन्फॉर्मेशन सभी को मिल जाए वैसे हम मेल पे भी इन्फॉर्मेशन भेज रहे हैं जूम के चैट बॉक्स में आप यूट्यूब लिंक भेज दिया गया है उससे आप देख लीजिए और जैसे ही इनोग्रेट फंक्शन कम्प्लीट होता है कम्बाइंड इनोग्रेट फंक्शन फिर से हम वापस इस लिंक पर जुड़ जाएंगे यह लिंक अभी ओपन है आप इसमें रह सकते हैं उसके बाद uh, क्या है आशुतोष जी व्हाट uh, uh, उसका uh, जो इनोग्रल के बाद का व्हाट इज प्रोग्राम सर कंबाइंड इनोग्रल फंक्शन है जो कि एआईसीटी द्वारा कराया जा रहा है जिसमें अच्छा। हमारे पार्टिसिपेंट भी रहेंगे और ए से चीफ गेस्ट रहेंगे जो उसको इनोग्रल इनोग्रेशन करेंगे हमारी एफ डी का इसके साथ साथ अन्य एफ भी है तो हम 11 तीस पे लगभग यह प्रोग्राम खत्म हो जाएगा तब वापस फिर से इसी लिंक में जुड़ जाएंगे लिंक ओपन है आप जुड़े रहिए इस लिंक में और आ, हमारा सेशन जो है ये ये फर्स्ट टेक्निकल सेशन कंटिन्यू होगा इलेवन थर्टी ठीक है सर इलेवन थर्टी पे मिलते हैं आप लोग लिंक में अभी रहिए लिंक से एग्जिट करने की अभी जरूरत नहीं है आप लिंक में ही बने रहिए
continuing so after finishing the inaugural function we will be continue the lecture first akira session it is still uh, going on yes sir yes sir it's in its last leg i think sir ye aapne kahan join kar world it is it is a vuka world extremely volatile what can happen next moment and how different programs will go on we don't know and this is also pretty uncertain and it is also very complex because same time so many fdps and as our director aict he was saying they have already kind of set a world record in terms of number of you know participants under this fdp belt and it is extremely ambiguous so uh, again in order to regulate and in order to do such things we need a kind of a ml and ai based solution and in order to make it more personalized we'll get to this thing how uh, this thing can be used but i'm pretty sure because your machines have this um, ai feature now in fact in qualcom to other chip makers they are integrating ai uh, algorithms ai in their phones so um, subsequently we are going ahead with this see um, what we had discussed was that this entire humanity our entire uh, journey our entire progression has been with regard to developing this um, this thinking and this intelligence and what we have done during the course of last about 200 years or so we have just number one we 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 we, we developed this computer system and then from giving computing this thing now we are trying to make it thinkable what we say as thinking machines so that this was the last slide before this interruption and this inauguration this took place that this uh, is it only our prerogative thinking is so um, what can uh, computers do better than us number one uh, why we why we do we it is because it can do large computations large we get fatigued in this and 100 digit number and click and you know about ai because the uh, while we had this deep thought deep thought it was in it was envisaged and developed sometime in 80s or uh, yes so deep thought was made to play with the um, this uh, ibm deep thought it was made to play with the gary kasparov the then uh, chess champion and initially kasparov won but uh, big blue and uh, in uh, the late 90s it defeated the world champion in chess so meaning thereby playing chess chess was kind of a very mental uh, game it was regarded to be and uh, gary kasparov was defeated so big blue was there and similarly about you all must be knowing about alpha go so alpha go and uh, it was developed and uh, alpha go um, 
defeated the go uh, the the go player which is regarded as the most complex game humanity has ever envisaged or ever envisioned or ever come across so alpha go defeated in 2016 in fact and it was part of you know this deep learning and it was um, the mid user because very very large extremely large um, calculations were done and alpha go was defeated and alpha go defeated uh, the, the the go player the korean player the sorry what, what, what's his name so he was defeated and beauty is not this that alpha go defeated um, our go player beauty is that after maybe after a couple of months alpha uh, alpha 0 or the, the new machine came that defeated alpha go so a machine defeated uh, a machine and that happened but for the first time and uh, it was a again it was a, um, a, a kind of a tremendous moment in the history of uh, ai and deep learning so it can play chess other games and uh, natural language questions you have with you your uh, mobile phones and you have assistants and voice enablers and translators and everything and multiple language so what is this all magic so this magic is all this is all ai driven similarly you have robots because uh, once we had this ai then we had uh, winters of ai and then again uh, robotics picked up especially in japan the places so are they intelligent so th this is the whole thing now we 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 we're going to have this kind of an advertisement that uh, we will say do you want a thinking machine so uh, this thinking machine, uh, thinking computer, these days we give configuration of a computer system. We want an i5, we want an i7, we want this kind of RAM and uh, we need this kind of, you know, this uh, this uh, terabyte of uh, hard disk and uh, this thing, this uh, cache. But now we will be talking in terms of thinking computers. Possibly we will be demanding a thinking computer because this thinking computer will do this cognitive thing for us. So so now with, with the man behind this entire this paradigm, this entire edifice of artificial intelligence, who this man is, and I, as I said earlier, I salute this man. Not only he was the man who broke this Enigma quote, the German Enigma quote, had there been no Alan Turing, and by the way, he died very young. You just try to find out about him. We had great maestros in uh, computing. He was a mathematician. He was a code encryptor. Dick Scripter and a computer wizard and whatnot. He died pretty young and under very, very, you know, very difficult uh, circumstances, situations. And, uh, and uh, as you know, very, um, it, it's a kind of uh, very summary uh, story because the Queen of uh, England um, pardoned him in um, in early 21st century, sometime in 2013, or and uh, it was a public recognition for him after his death. You know, he died sometime in uh, 50s and uh, 1950s. So and uh, after uh, that much time, and this man is behind artificial intelligence. Can you uh, believe it? And British scientists and he uh, broke this enigma code. Germans had this. Second World War, the history would have been different had there been no Alan Turing. But because he broke this uh, the, this code, Enigma code, which was rock solid, Germans were confident that nobody can ever break this. That is why encryption description is so important. And decrypting a particular uh, particular thing and uh, the kind of mental privacy it is required, Alan Turing had this, so he broke it. Probability theory, the all invented theory behind this Turing machine and Turing test. So it is this Turing test which is fundamental to artificial intelligence. Now, what does it say? There is a man. Uh, there is a man sitting here. There is a computer here. There is a computer here. There is this observer, you know, distinguish between man and machine. Now this uh, C is interacting with A and B. Maybe they are in two different rooms or in some same room. So interacting. There is a screen. There is a keyboard and interacting. The moment the moment C does not know whether he or she is interacting with the machine or with the human being. So that, uh, that at that very moment, it means that the machine has 
cleared Turing test. So it is an amazing thing that happened with Turing that time he gave and again this entire this notion of uh, you know this the uh, um, the intelligence giving uh, intelligence to machine. So if it could be computers thought to be indistinguishable from a human, so it was this Turing test which gave this idea of uh, Turing. And by the way, very interesting part is because every day today also you must be making use of your capture. So this capture is important because ultimately this capture this uh, gives account of you know this uh, after almost after um, how many years after maybe about uh, more than 50 years. Now we are saying we are trying to find out whether a machine has been logged in uh, by a robot or by a human. So we do this by uh, by uh, applying this captcha code. So how interesting. So this is again a journey of AI, of intelligence, how we are making computer systems thinking. And uh, so this is a captcha. This is stands for, as you know, completely automated public Turing test. Again, Turing. Mr. Turing remains to be our idol to tell computers and humans apart. So this is CAPTCHA. Once we do this, and you know why? Because this uh, picture, this image, and for that we need conventional neural network, as you know, CNN. Because uh, if there is uh, this thing, any, any picture, any this thing, so it is very uh, difficult for a computer to decipher, to distinguish, and the basic difference. So therefore, CAPTCHA, as you will now onwards, you will find out. So for you it is so very simple because it is our 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 cognitive uh, you know this uh, supremacy this cognitive uh, prowess that you have you can uh, easily distinguish a child can do this but a machine finds it difficult, of course, in the world of today where, where this the billions of images has been imaged for part of image processing, for part of image content. So, so many things are happening. But as of now, Nicholas J. Hopper, Manuel Blum, and Louise Monet, and John Langford, and uh, 2003, they came, came up with this capture. So, uh, the whole idea is uh, this thing that it, it, it took place between uh, about uh, 50, 60 years. This is Alan Turing's uh, paper that he produced. And uh, this gives, especially if, <laughs> to be academic, uh, some, you know, the, this kind of feel that uh, how big the man was, uh, that uh, not only he gave this whole idea, and that early when nobody could ever think about it. He not only gave this idea, but practically proposed a kind of test. And uh, this John von Neumann architecture, again, this becomes very important because for any computing person, we know this John von Neumann, not only he is known for this computing, for so many things, again, this man, Hungarian mathematician, so they, they did wonders from the, with, with, with regard to this um, bombs, atomic bombs, hydrogen, he was instrumental, but also because of this stored program concept. So it's stored how then this could be stored and how this computing can move forward. So it was his this thing. So now computer, now there is this computer, there is Turing machine. So the, we are talking about in terms of intelligence, how we are giving data to, a, to an electronic device. Uh, 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 one important term I just want to propose here, it is that kind of, you know, this electronic brain are we trying to give electronic brain to a machine to someone and electronically it, it is there so therefore it does not tire it has no issues and it can do trillions of calculations so uh, are we moving towards that that so initially once we had this uh, john von newman days architecture and we had this so we had data we're supplying data to the machine and what machine was doing computer system was doing on the basis of a particular set of rules something was there and it was giving some 
सम आउटपुट सो इट वेंट ऑन द एंटायर पैराडाइम ऑफ दिस थिंग वेंट ऑन इन द प्रोसेस व्हाट वाज हैपनिंग देयर वाज डेटा देयर वाज इंफॉर्मेशन देयर वाज नॉलेज एज वी से एंड इट वाज लीडिंग टू इंटेलिजेंस नाउ समथिंग हैपेंड ड्रामेटिकली डिफरेंट विद रिगार्ड टू मशीन लर्निंग लेटर ऑन व्हाट हैपेंड वी वर सप्लाइंग डेटा एंड विद यू नो दिस सेट ऑफ रूल्स formulation formula something and processing was going on it was leading to some output some answer some solution now it is uh, with machine learning it is it, it is all together this conventional computing and now it has been changed to this entire paradigm is changed how it is changed now we are giving data plus the solution part is also there with us at the very beginning and what is uh, what is happening this this, this thing the solution part is there the input is there so you are every time round changing those rules are changing and you are fixing it trial and error every time you are changing it uh, so that you are training it you are training your data in order to make it more and more efficient so that is you are making your machine intelligent you are uh, you are making it better efficient so that is what uh, that is the essence of this entire machine learning so that as we know the, 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 this is all basic data because at the end of it dr ashutosh will share it all all the presentation so the, the data is defined and the, all those things are there however with regard to machine learning as we know as we will um, progress forward you know with with, with with the numbers this thing is always possible formulation is possible you can uh, do that part but with regard to pictures images complex data and with regard to uh, Uh, that kind of data we, which has huge volume which is uh, absolutely uh, the velocity of that data is very volume is very big the velocity is there which has tremendous variety and which has uh, a particular value added to it and in terms of labels also it can be because uh, once we we were talking in terms of supervised learning so to so value uh, this uh, labels are there and uh, also veracity how we curate the data is so big data comes into forefront so all these features of vees with regard to volume with regard to velocity with regard to variety with regard to value with regard to veracity so all these uh, you know these uh, attributes of data this is there and that also decides the course of the, your machine learning because um, once it becomes too big enormous enormous amount of data so in that situation it leads especially in 21st century because you have sensors you have mobile every now and then you are clicking a picture you are taking a picture you have sensors you have satellite imagery you have you are n number of things because i worked as um, with the space application center of the state um, for, for for about 3 years as director so we used to have n number of satellite imagery every now and then so tremendous amount of data we were generating so how to process that data becomes important with conventional computing at times it is not possible with the um, with the basic machine language uh, with machine learning it is not possible so we gotten into uh, this big data and uh, especially this uh, deep learning so all those uh, paradigms they were used so this um, data is important uh, this um, data labeling what kind of data because these days we say data is the the new oil the country the organization uh, the system that has data um, we say it it it, it is it is it, it it happens to be you know on the driver seat because data uh, data does everything especially uh, for we educators for we uh, researchers the 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 data and in data veracity the accuracy the, the you know the this uh, um, precision uh, based centric so the, all those uh, things are very important and that leads to information and again it leads to this implica- this uh, some kind of implication what kind of decision making it is used and knowledge for cognition capacity it is know how know why so it it is all there like what happened in case of our brain and intelligence it is with regard to uh, the kind of uh, this thing is there 
now there's artificial intelligence and making computers to think now so primarily it is about it because this uh, the, the, this um, this uh, kind of session of mine i have been asked to you know put forward all different notions terms and this thing so subsequent sessions because we, we, we have 14 sessions so you will get to know about all those things and especially hands on also not only you will be dealing with you know this uh, python and uh, with tensorflow so all those uh, basic tools and techniques you will be using and uh, my idea out here to 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 um, you know this provide this appreciation and acquaintance with um, what is happening and uh, from this entire entire uh, uh, step wise you know this evolution of artificial intelligence and as it has progressed so number one it is making uh, your system um, it can this capacity is that could think and automation of um, activities with human thinking and uh, study of uh, mental faculties through the use of computational models developing algorithms and computational models again how uh, beautifully can we do that and uh, we have uh, because we know about the statistical uh, models and uh, the statistical techniques the regression analysis multiple regression analysis bgn so all, all of that so it is it is of um, uh, we will be going to use all those techniques on one hand and um, at the at the other hand all those uh, you know this modeling modeling or uh, kind computational modeling and those algorithms will be reaching out to already existing um, algorithms also will be making use of and for that again um, because uh, dr ashutosh and uh, the fellow uh, presenters because matlab is going to be um, they, they will be using matlab and um, and for larger um, this uh, data sets over larger um, data sets. It's creating machines which will uh, require so uh, this is about it uh, about uh, this artificial intelligence and uh, this uh, people say this Dartmouth summer research project in 50s it is uh, primarily the birthplace of artificial intelligence and uh, mccarthy and uh, they, they, there was 10 15 researchers they um, gotten together they started discussing uh, you know this uh, thinking machines and uh, artificial intelligence and then uh, this thing is there and subsequently now it is picking up now uh, it was it was one domain and initially it was thought to be you know that it will be used in uh, uh, certain uh, certain certain areas certain spheres of life but as we see today the topic which has been given to me it talks about the societal development in all those different spectrum so um, we will be covering it not only in education not only in healthcare not only in cyber security uh, that this thing higher uh, and suppose we say not only in terms of environmental product in not only in terms of this climate change all bigger questions which in fact cannot be solved by uh, normal uh, computing and uh, this thing so um, ai and uh, ai can be used you know um, extensively biological system gna and i, I told you about this um, uh, especially about this vaccine for um, uh, covid 19 so suppose we want to make use of viruses as we know billions of years back they came and especially the rna um, uh, th these viruses and how they are mutating so we need enormous amount of computing in fact it will take us in in order to solve it normal course we take us enormous uh, unthinkable amount of time but with this amount of all those ai based with all those and uh, these days we also talking in terms of very high performance um, computing high uh, computing systems and uh, furthermore we'll be talking about quantum uh, computing which is so fast that uh, normal computing is taking uh, you know uh, thousands of years this is going to do in a very short span of time so we will be needing all that so what happened um, ai picked up in uh, 56 onwards and it was sponsored by the 
research project was sponsored by US and UK governments and it picked up but around 73 they realized that uh, it is not uh, you know doing any good so it was a kind of winter years of AI and uh, it was kind of stopped the funding was stopped but again thankfully it picked up and again went on and then this uh, expert system you know which is again on the basis of if then else and this uh, predicate logic and list list and programming and programming logic prologue so through mice and other things expert system you must be knowing so it, it, it picked up and then this robotics picked up and we say fifth generation and this thing so it all started happening so we, we made use of uh, computer engineering and the mechanical engineering and computer science cognitive science all all integrated together this robotics picked up and but interestingly ai picked up subsequently so it is uh, this journey and we say in terms of weak ai and strong ai so roger penrose we were referring to so there are you must have seen matrix and you must have seen terminator so those are uh, you know strong ai and at times you think it is not achievable and ai can't do this but the, this is also a time of sophia humanoids and the, all those things so uh, we don't know i mean uh, in my place a computer a humanoid or uh, you know it is it is always possible the day we are and in fact um, this uh, world economic forum i think in 2000 um, uh, in uh, 2018 or 17 they came up with a report and it said it, it will be in a position to write a nice novel creative uh, novel for, for which it could also be given some prize some award and similarly um, it will be creating uh, you know all those um, all those things so uh, meaning thereby um, again, then this is going to be under this strong ai so whether it will be whether uh, computers and brain will have uh, equivalent computing power this got to be seen we know we, we, we have these neurons but again as we say 100 billion neurons we have how these neurons are uh, connected and through synapses and how do they work and how do they infer different things and how very little uh, do we make use of our uh, this uh, uh, this faculty which we call uh, our brain so, so uh, whether uh, computers will have this kind of computing power this got to be seen but uh, especially uh, marvin minsky he is a great proponent of this um, uh, strong AI, the strong AI that measures the human intelligence and uh, believe that computers are capable of true uh, this thing, but weak AI, this narrow AI, basically, uh, generally we refer to as of now, because again, it is evolving. We don't know for certain, um, 10 years down the line, the kind of, uh, you know, this systems and machines that you will be um, uh, discussing uh, but during the course of uh, these five days, you will get to know that not only it is simulating but it is doing wonders it is it is again the the, the, the case may be the kind of data sets you have if you have those data sets which are good which are among us so you can reach out to uh, amazing results so uh, it, 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 it is a possibility with with this thing and uh, Roger Penrose because uh, please I will um, advise you all teachers and this thing it is a lovely book not only he was given this no not because um, he was uh, conferred with this uh, Nobel Prize this year but uh, amazing amazing mathematician researcher and a great proponent of uh, this thing uh, of weak AI so uh, Emperor's new mind and he has also written um, 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 many 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 books and um, starting from because all these Stephen Hawking to this and uh, um, this uh, um. Uh, the, 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 this is a league of mathematician and physicist and they got into computing so uh, if you go through it and this is going to be so so very wonderful so this is artificial intelligence again this human one and uh, uh, this is again artificial how your uh, limbs or your organ your hands and everything your skin you know the amount of data items we have so how can we emulate 
how can we simulate how can we do all that thing is uh, again something very very important with regard to this spectrum of uh, this ai so this uh, 43 onward the evolution begins turing machine is there birth of ai this darmouth conference chat box eliza yes eliza again the, 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 this is interesting because uh, eliza joseph uh, when uh, born and uh, he came up with this and uh, in fact uh, it was uh, it was it was developed so similarly in 72 this uh, robo came first ai winter 74 as uh, we were saying this this thing got stopped the funding was and uh, this expert system came in um, the 80s and the second ai winter again it became uh, it again uh, prevailed for some time and i D Blue, this is a very interesting word chess champion. It uh, defeated Gary Kospara was defeated. Now imagine about the scene. We we had humanity had never seen such a situation before, and this is happening. This this millennium bug we were talking about, especially computer science people, IT people, they talked about this time, 2000, very, very important. And it's a time when already WWW had been unveiled by Tim Berners-Lee. It was already there. We had browser, we had this thing, so that the world was more a connected place. So Deep Blue was defeated there. Deep Blue defeated Gary Kasparov in chess. So it was some kind of, you know, a milestone, especially in this journey. AI and home and everything got started home ibm watson you you must be knowing about ibm watson especially for cancer this treatment other things ibm watson is a one point solution you give it and this is tremendous so um, the kind of uh, you know then the, this thing is there so it is uh, the, the features this thing it is there and then the google and uh, the, the, this thing so larry page and uh, um, uh, the, the, this was so this uh, uh, Google journey started and then the Google AI, Google this thing, Google now. So this changed the entire course of TensorFlow or open source. So it, it gave a new uh, leash, not only to AI, but new dimensions were opened up. And it's a new world altogether, especially for researchers and Kaggle and so the new data set which were created. So it is, it is, it is all a change situation. Amazon Eco and uh, the, this thing, uh, Alexa, you must have seen and uh, everybody's household. So when we talk uh, to the, these ones from music to this, so the, it, it has now become a household thing. It was never there before, but it has happened so swiftly. So therefore, the spectrum of entire spectrum of AI from one corner to another, and this also opens up so many projects for us. It gives us so many opportunity, IoT, Internet of Things. To um, these days, the Internet of Things and artificial um, artificiality of things. So, uh, so many things are happening, and especially in research domain, through mobile apps and uh, other things in agriculture, in education, everywhere it is there. So, it is two purposes are there for AI, and number one is to power the computers to augment this thing, and uh, these are uh, basically to augment humans or to augment humans in this capacity uh, and uh, similarly on the other hand it is it gives the computers the, the, this thing what is the purpose to understand how humans think humanoids we are uh, also um, uh, processing towards uh, can we have an army of humanoids which don't die especially for critical application in disaster like situation when one has to jump we lose so many life you must have you must be knowing about this autonomous driverless uh, cars that uh, you know this uh, silicon valley is full of uh, those things uh, well we are having a different connotation because we have high degree of unemployment we have such a huge population and these kind of skills which have employed large number of people once uh, we have AI, machine we have ML, when we have deep learning, all those auto systems, when we have so it is it is it is it is again a, a discussion point. And Harari, especially because you all know Harari again, you must go through this. Uh, it's it's again a book. Uh, you all know Harari because he has written um, three lovely books, 
and uh, one book is uh, Homo Sapiens. The other is Homo Deus, and then the journey of and he's a historian basically. The third book is Twenty uh, One Lessons for the Twenty First Century, and in which in this book he talks about whether this AI or these technologies will it meet to hackable uh, humans? Can we hack uh, the humans? Because my moment, my choice, my preference, my this thing, my relations, how I deal, you know, uh, in my social circle, how I behave, how I react, what I eat, which uh, restaurant and which place do I visit most, which route I track. So he is saying the. I mean, it is so much available to. I mean, this is one discussion point, and it is good because ultimately you need to have all those discussions. Unless you have discussions, humanity can't uh, progress. It can't thrive. It can't, uh, you know, move ahead. So it is also good for us if we could such a project because this is again question of morality, which to which degree the privacy thing this is uh, important, especially with regard to data. So um, how much data is to be shared and and uh, once you have this IoT, once you have this mobiles, and once you have all those uh, CCTVs around and the smart TVs around, everything you have Alexa. So, so virtually uh, think about the situation where everything is tracked. So you all know Harari, he, he, he talks about the situation. He says humans are hackable. And uh, virtually, so the, the, uh, can we have an army of people, army, and if not people, especially for those critical applications because human life is precious we can have those machines we can have those humanoids and uh, especially for extremely again this is a spectrum of a societal development for disaster like situation there is forest of fire human beings are you know rushing into it looking up to things can we have those machines and we don't know secretly how many countries already working you know that in that direction um, can we have army um, these uh, artificial intelligent uh, machines you know as uh, army uh, units army brigades for 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 forest fire for um, landslide situation during tsunamis helping out people if we have intelligent people so this is all human um, centric uh, which can facilitate you know human society in terms of uh, through all those uh, uh, augmented uh, augmented technologies and uh, uh, augmented reality of course this thing can be used in education virtual like virtual reality so um, uh, education can be a huge use um, huge use beneficiary in terms of uh, artificial intelligence so similarly computers uh, so a humanoid way as i was saying so this is again uh, something very important and uh, interchangeably many a times we talk about it now uh, this is uh, different uh, connotations and uh, this thing from deep learning and as i had already mentioned supervised with labels and unsupervised extraction and classification of data machine translation which way nlp natural language processing and question answering you have bots how many times do you realize that uh, you have been answered by a bot. A bot is interacting with you, especially uh, insurance companies, banking, and this thing, and checkbox is virtually, and it is not at all difficult. So the, it, is, it, is, it is, we are coming to terms with all these technologies. It means it is happening. It's, and computer machine vision, I have forgotten the name of this, this, this uh, Stanford professor Lily, who is uh, for last many, Lily Fee, what's her name? But she, um, a tremendous, uh, amazing amount of work she has done, you know, in this domain of computer vision. Because computer vision for everything, a child is born and from that moment on, billions of images that um, he sees and is storing the, all those things. Initially, it was difficult, but with the kind of, you know, this uh, processing power, I am saying time and again, this um, huge, huge, huge astonishing computing power we have. So this computer vision is becoming a reality in in the field of disability we, we talk about you know this uh, uh, amputated arm and leg and this thing now we have artificial this thing so artificial
artificial arms and legs and cheeks and nose and ears and this thing it is always a possibility so ai and uh, this thing can uh, you know can uh, is doing a tremendous amount of uh, tremendous amount of contribution the, what is this this is spectrum of entire spectrum of human human genius and the development of entire human you know this journey of evolution so it is on and speech somebody is dumb cannot speak so uh, like in case of you know this uh, because uh, this uh, persisting uh, ailment that uh, Stephen Hawking faced the, the great man so um, the, the, the machine was speaking and whatever it will make me decipher understandable so now once we have the, these days we we talk to these uh, um, speech to text convergence which has become now uh, ever, every man's you know a very very simple activity but look at the science behind it look at the effort behind it look at the tenacity the skills and the hard work of computer scientists and IT people of co cognitive scientists and interdisciplinary field mathematicians you know of psychologists so, so it is so many different um, uh, fields are associated so uh, meaning thereby from governance from governance to planning to robotics to vision to the, the, this thing it is everywhere so again now we know uh, what 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 uh, these are so it is uh, basically now still there is time so it is ability to perform this thing and the ai based system in that garnered attentions and uh, ml system is and machine learning is from uh, the, the this is this is again because the machine uh, got to be machine got to be trained and over and this is trained over and over again so it becomes it becomes uh, more advanced and more effective and impacting our lives so this is again the spectrum from a smartphone you are carrying but how many people know that it is all ai enabled so the machines we are having so uh, from a smartphone and the amount of data we are generating so um, some we, we, we got to make use of that data social media platforms e-commerce anything you are doing from uh, starting from swiggy to this to this small uh, then these ones to amazon everywhere so it is used autonomous vehicle it is used and the security for surveillance it is used for navigate navigation it is used you are uh, traveling through one track and second time is it tells you that whether you travel through same route same path so that is again this ai so it is being used banking sector massively huge amount of financial sector stock market and many a times they think you know uh, these uh, computer science machine learning people deep learning people they can do any any kind of thing so it is because of this this financial sector this banking sector this is all stock exchange this is all ai ai can do wonders smart homes you can have your uh, in fact i have also this facility because it is governed by uh, um, my um, one room so it is all uh, sensor driven iot based so um, it is it, it is it is like that so it is uh, through mobile you can switch it off so you can switch it on your refrigerator your tv everything at uh, um, remote uh, situations locations now uh, because uh, as i told you for machine learning especially for large volume of data where you need um, the you know uh, this thing um, the big data so for facial recognition for data ingestion where you, you do this and uh, where, where you have uh, quantum computing where in case you know you have this binary zeros and ones where there you are making use of um, uh, yeah, qubit quantum bit and um, uh, superimposition so at the same time you you are the, the, this is at multiple states so uh, speed is enormous of uh, quantum computing so a day is not far when we will be processing and you are mobile will have this capacity you know to process unthinkable amount of data at the same time so ai will uh, go with quantum is going to be is going to be a totally completely game-changing experience that is why uh, we are 
government is also emphasizes upon the fact that quantum computing and AI got to be taken up extremely seriously, and AICT uh, has taken it very seriously. Therefore, it needs to be you know taken up uh, with, with, with that kind of sincerity and seriousness. So deep learning, automate task, and the cloud because everything is there now. You have data centers, and uh, then these clouds are there. It, this, this can be with regard to your data set for your images and um, for your uh, other requirements. So these things can be used. The process of data and how this is so data is generated. Uh, you, you, we, we know it is stored, it is processed, and uh, human-like situation. And uh, this is actionable insight. Uh, actionable, it, it is there. So uh, this is how this uh, entire this uh, paradigm moves on. So again, all those are integrated. And uh, look at it again. This uh, more than 200 years of this thing from cognitive science, from where uh, computing has emerged to this day, everything is happening again. And uh, you will find there is a symphony. There is uh, th this kind of, you know, th there is a beautiful uh, uh, kind of uh, th this navigation is there. It is happening so very sequentially. So you had uh, high computing, you came, you came up with larger data set, larger data set, you came up with better algorithm, you came up with better algorithms, you, you could train your data beautifully, you could train your data fully, you started getting your results properly, you started getting your results beautifully means better results happened. So you had better algorithm, you had better models. So all those things happened, you know, in a symphony and uh, that thing has been going on uh, so very beautifully. Now, uh, all again, uh, what problems and uh, this thing, we need these things. Uh, we, uh, as I told you, conventional computing is you have uh, inputs and you have processing, you're getting output. So it is there. But there are so many issues, especially I'm talking about this virus, this vaccine, this thing, biotechnology to uh, computational biology and environmental climate change issues and oceanography and uh, space exploration and uh, deep sea explorations and what all is so a number of applications. It is not simply that uh, library based, this thing is there, but at the same time, in case of education, suppose for education, we, 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 we talked about. So personalization. Now at the moment we have 100 students and online also we have 100 students. How are they thinking? How are they assimilating? How are they digesting? How much are they understanding? So personalization of teaching learning can be made possible with the help of um, AI and machine learning. How much attentive a child is, and uh, I had proposed initially three models uh, in education health. We will come to it. Okay, we will come to it once the slide comes. So, health sector has been usually, usually been a beneficiary of this thing because starting from you know X-rays to MRI to this thing and ultrasound, everything now it is becoming uh, you know these AI based, where larger data sets and those data sets are again training it. Itself, retraining itself and it is becoming better and better in terms of any person. Similarly, it may be very critically, you know, those critical diseases, ailments, for that also it is important. So similarly for education, for livelihood, data science, AI, robotics, and uh, natural language processing, computer vision, case of disabilities, agriculture, environment, what field is not there, which ca ca cannot be water stream, water rejuvenation, River, every resource management, futuristic modeling, predictions, businesses enormously can be changed by if properly used government, governance, policy making. Aadhaar could do all that things. In 10 years time, we know that this thing is there. Everything is reaching out to a place. And we, we, we thought, yes, there are again those issues of privacy of this thing, other things. But look at it if um, applied and employed with the proper you know care and caveat so policy making can be so very so very distinct and each individual each individual at every level at every point at last mile can be you know can be benefited through this because you have this capacity to deal with that large amount of data through AI NML it is indeed a possibility which earlier was not 
So it is this case through which you can do this. It is doable. Similarly, explorations, space exploration and diving down. So meaning thereby these are few examples. I could think about a few, few things. So it is, uh, I have just jotted down. And uh, minutes before I uh, did this, uh, this personalization in terms of education. Every child now can be, can be, uh, you know, focused. Earlier on, we have hundreds and thousands of millions. If India, possibly um, of the population of the U.S., we have the student in strength. We have um, about 34 crore, uh, you know, under MHRT ministry. So look at it. It is to the tune of U.S. population. So personalization, every child, smart content, that it reaches out to him. Learning tasks, whether he's learning not, assessment, psychoanalysis, all those things are possible. Mentoring, tutoring, it is doable. It is not difficult. And 24 minded, 24 by 7 access to learning is possible. So learning is the ultimate crux of we human beings. It is the ultimate, this is lifelong learning. So if learning has to go on, it means we have to have uh, this thing. So I had uh, and proposed three models earlier. I always talk about it. One model in education is love. So love is learning oriented, virtual environment, L learning oriented. Anywhere, everywhere you are, you can make use of these things and you can make it pretty personalized through AI and ML implementation. It is doable. In a class also, you can do this. It's a model. Care again. Care is again, you can celebrate mistakes, try, trial and error that I referred to earlier on. Because we have evolved like this. Our system of education, we don't promote, we don't encourage asking questions. Please, because asking questions is possible under this realm of AI, because unless a mistake is committed, this system would have not been evolved or developed. So you celebrate the mistake part and any child will do this. So it got to be appreciated. A is for appreciating and, uh, you know, the, this, uh, of this celebration. R is so we can make a system responsive because this uh, back propagation is always possible in our uh, neural network or uh, ANN. I mean, the, 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 this is just a, um, just an indicator, but it is possible. And the E is for engaging. Engagement is possible. Anyone, any learner can be engaged through this. Similarly, we have hope. And uh, hope is that uh, it is holistic. It should be. And it should be uh, pleasurable. Education should always be pleasurable. Why should they do it? Because and it is stiff and it is uh, someone is not interested again. You are uh, um, he or she has been, uh, you know, uh, pressurized. So with AI, you have uh, this thing, you have a system. So uh, this lifelong learning 24 by 7, which is pleasurable, it, it can go on. And uh, a child and a learner and anyone who is interested in learning can go on. E ultimately uh, stands for empowering. So this is empowerment of uh, this thing. And these are important tools, especially for 21st century, where we, do, we need collaborative learning, where we need uh, critical uh, thinking where we need you know problem solving ability so all for all those traits for all those traits uh, minded for all those traits we need ai and ml based you know this uh, educational system and uh, it is many a times we, we are doing this but it is uh, it is indeed doable and how machine learning is revolutionizing education system adaptive learning is possible predictive analytics is there you you can talk about it you can assess any students looking at the kind of you know once you have data so predictive analytics is there increasing it can make it more efficient personalized learning again learning analytics is there and many companies these days they talk about it but we educators we teachers we researchers and it is an excellent field and it is doable because we have um, this uh, student class and it is also doable accurately grading assignment so admission to assessment we talk about it but ai integration is possible these are basic applications artificial intelligence in our daily lives and as you know you have gps and uh, uh, 
uh, Google Maps and movie and Netflix every day tells you about your choices and the Spotify music streaming restaurants and this and apps and so these, these, these things are possible this march of artificial intelligence and um, it has been like this Alexa and as we have discussed Google Home and this thing it has been there Uber to this driverless cars so it is just a purpose is just to uh, appreciate and uh, acknowledge this whole idea that AI is there it is with us now it is not only in some distant part it is with us it is there and therefore it got to be it got to be not only leveraged it got to be relished and it got to be worked upon so this is um, uh, world economic forums report because i am uh, someone who very closely monitors and uh, follow uh, world economic forum which is held in davos every year so uh, 2017 it came so it says in 2004 it will poker game it will went to 26 right high school essay and 27 successfully mimic any musician so we will have a kishore kumar or we will have uh, you know uh, pink floyd so um, any musician it will do 28 generate to 40 pop songs and 28 generate creative video it can be even faster so 49 right uh, you know the uh, new uh, bestseller so indeed uh, these are possibilities with uh, this thing and ai in healthcare again uh, there are so many detection of ailments and treatments and associated cares and uh, so um, it is it, it is it is there so um, it, is, it is a huge thing starting from our risk was to this thing it is uh, this entire data the analytics part it is all driven through this is again a spectrum of societal development that uh, the healthcare is taken care of and virtual nursing assistants these these have become a possibility now drug discovery again it's a huge field i give you this example of this code breaker so this is nothing with you know code breaking is possible because otherwise it was earlier not possible ai assisted medical diagnosis diagnosis uh, robotic surgery in fact robotic surgery it um, beat up a human doctor so um, uh, never before it it had happened so medical risk and prediction and uh, clinical uh, uh, trial so earlier on ashutosh ji I'll, I'll i'll just wrap it up in a short while is it fine yes sir yes sir i'll i'll, I'll, sir. I'll, I'll just do that sir, so um, and uh, something very interesting because these are uh, achievements these are hypes and excitements and fears so we we, we fear these things that uh, it will replace and the radiologist so we also got to dispel these myths at times with the educationist and researchers and hype it is so it will uh, do this so everything everything has its role human beings and doctors and teachers and everyone so um, teachers role we at times we say there is a machine to do so but it uh, teachers role will be of a of a moderator of a curator who would have a machine who would have alexa who would have any assistant but uh, similarly um, uh, the, the, the higher order jobs will be um, with the teachers with the doctors with entrepreneurs kind of similarly uh, what does the uh, this future hold uh, this increasing complexity data because we have enormous amount of data on our uh, uh, through our mobile phones cutting at technologies social entrepreneurs sustainable models sdg goals um, sustainable development goals so and the partnership between organizations what you are doing in tamil nadu or in andhra or in rajasthan what we are doing here so stronger public private community partnerships they, 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 these are the need of our and especially in computing like what happened in case of this Higgs boson so similarly and what happened in case of you know this grid computing what happens in case of www and similarly lot many possibilities are there AI application in healthcare again these are things for from fraud detection to administrative this thing so so many key areas where this thing has been used this is supervised learning classification and um, it has been used enormously 
uh, uh, supervised learning and uh, CT scan, X-ray diagnostic, it is there. And uh, similarly out here, unsupervised learning, like youths, you know, unsupervised learning, it takes into account um, in an unsupervised, unlabeled data. So uh, you will have a session on this thing wherein uh, with, the, with the help of, you know, proper tools, this thing can be taken into account how this face recognition of a cat, of a boy, of an element, how it is distinguishable, how this can be trained, this can be taken up. And uh, similarly, uh, this CRISPR I, I referred to, gene editing. So these are higher order ML uh, applications and uh, this thing which are there. Clinical research. Now on clinical research, we used to lose so many lives. So clinical research, uh, the, this thing is possible. With, with what is happening with regard to a particular, you know, the, this uh, administration of a particular drug. So how it is responding. So uh, these are different ones. And uh, this is about uh, natural language processing, which is again a huge branch, huge, because ultimately humanity is nothing but, you know, these uh, languages and these are how these are spoken, written. So, uh, the, and how computer is going to decipher, understand, and also act upon on the basis of, we could take command. So writing skills, many a times I say, any skill remains with human being for about five to 10,000 years. Yes, writing has been there for us for last about eight to 10,000 years. So because we have been doing this, so are we saying, you know, uh, are we doing away fast with uh, this writing part? Because uh, these days keyboards and this thing and uh, this is spoken part we are making use of. So again, this is rule based or how we are going to do this. It is very important. NLP applications and different ones, um, these are uh, there. Watson, IBM Watson again, this cognitive solutions available 2018 onwards. So it is there um, through IBM Watson, amazing machine, amazing work. And we can relish and we can take pride the kind of work which has been done and with the amount of data sets and with the amount of precision which has already been dealt with, that is enormous. So, and uh, similarly out here, AI voice technology assistance consumers. So it is there, Watson and uh, all those uh, in Nevada's uh, this AI um, platforms and uh, mm, uh, this one, uh, Linux based operating system to all the, for open source. And th there are so many uh, open source uh, softwares available with regard to different ones, which is uh, at times astonishing. You have Microsoft Cortana and uh, you have Siri, you have um, Alexa. So these are all for uh, assistance. This uh, electronic, uh, this one EHR, again, with regard to, uh, with, with, with regard to healthcare system, it is uh, there. So um, this is um, uh, biological, this thing, all, but I'll be sharing uh, this thing uh, with uh, you all. It will remain with you and uh, limitations of machine learning because when we, we, we deal with the higher order data sets, so then we need uh, uh, deep learning and uh, you will be also talking about, uh, we'll be discussing in uh, subsequent uh, sessions about uh, CNN uh, based systems that uh, you will be uh, uh, going through. Is recognition, voice recognition, predictive analysis, and uh, uh, Ashutosh Ji is our uh, next presenter, Professor uh, Saxena. Is he ready? Because it has, I uh, have taken a little longer time, I think, the machine learning, and is, is he there? So, yes, sir. Professor Saxena is there. Uh, yes, yes. So, Professor Saxena, last two minutes. So, uh, sir, this one. Uh, sir, please carry on. Yeah. <laughs> We're enjoying it. Testing and input signals and learning method systems. So, how are you going to train your systems and uh, uh, how are you developing uh, better algorithms and how these algorithms uh, control, uh, you know, they control and build better knowledge structures? 
because ultimately we're looking forward to developing knowledge structures once we have those ones so we have better equipped systems with us better libraries better data sets so it is nothing but developing better uh, data sets so all these uh, algorithms supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning and uh, you will go through during the course of this session machine learning is structures at all different levels how these have been labeled and uh, how are we uh, going to you know um, develop um, these one predictive models and uh, um, how are we going to have uh, you know uh, these one biases again uh, you will be studying and uh, how are you going to minimize errors so in in, in supervised in unsupervised and reinforcement learning you will be learning about these uh, different ones and uh, clustering classification estimation dimensionality also of course dimensionality because with machine learning uh, with, with the kind of dimensionality of data we have with machine learning at times we need higher dimensionality and uh, you know bigger data sets so uh, deep learning will come into forefront for agriculture traditional farming and uh, this is all about it. So uh, a small example earlier, we used to have a very, very small example earlier, we used to have this kind of poultry farm. Now we have these many. So where we have millions also, how to deal with it? So you can have a personalized rack also. So it can be with regard to a cybersecurity rack or with regard to a poultry farm uh, rack. So it is doable once you have uh, this thing. And uh, similarly, with regard to, uh, you know, this uh, in farming in um, in the kind of amount of land we have available we have uh, natural resources we, we are depleting so for everything everywhere uh, this thing can be used and very interesting part is uh, with regard to iot with regard to data gathering because it is shrinking and cost is also coming down so it is uh, decision support to industry leading capacities and uh, uh, so data science is flourishing in a big way so seed genetics environmental conditions and this so everywhere um, uh, idea is soil moisture temperature in fact uh, dr ashutosh and we are working on a project and we are doing this soil moisture temperature this accounting and with regard to a certain field and we're working on as to how to you know how to uh, monitor it and how to predict what kind of you know which one is a better solution so it means yeah, again this is part of it so do it yourself low price soil and water sensors so it is doable these are all doable systems so if uh, time permits and dr ashutosh uh, can give an account of this soil and water sensors so again the, this is analyzing satellite images satellite images are huge so for that again it is uh, done all the land everywhere you are sitting so this thing can be mapped through satellites but those are huge data sets so a and n and again so ai based solutions are possible so um, drones drones is again a possibility not only feeding your refrigerators to reaching out to all critical areas so in, especially in himalayas everywhere where we are so um, it is it is indeed a possibility through that it is it is done and agriculture robots are possible for farmers government of india is coming up with this one and this is for the last man the farmer how and uh, meteorological data um, today's rainy season now it has become so very predictable and uh, you know accessible for us we know tomorrow it will rain day after so how many people know five years before how many people were knowing about it the kind of uh, this thing so it is a very complex process but it has been made easy it means technology can do wonderful things ai ml techniques can you know uh, augment present social structures architecture to space science to livable sustainable life it can help it can save energy time it has its caveats are there as i had discussed earlier human dignity and reduce it can labor but how can it um, somehow uh, uh, address other questions those are of important government <laughs> elections elections also and 
the perception management so it is also possible and it, that's a field of my interest and uh, this is a kind of a sofia era you know and uh, sofia and for the first time by the way africa was regarded a machine was ai was given uh, a patent it was uh, awarded a patent and similarly uh, saudi arabia gets citizenship to sofia so it means uh, things are happening very fast and uh, threats to as i discussed with uh, you all uh, harari privacy and human hacking everything is there so it is kind of you know it is again a, a matter of great concern and uh, need for constructivism could be a boon at times and uh, with more and more we want the greed that is there so and wasted interest so that can also lead to you know doomsday so it is there so um, i think uh, i have taken much time but uh, dr uh, professor saxena will forgive me but i just wanted to give an account of entire spectrum of what is happening in ai because consequent all sessions you can come up with uh, all these lectures and possibly every thread every string um, uh, they will cover up so um, the questions you can uh, put up questions on the chat box and we will answer all those and uh, i over it now i hand it over to dr ashutosh thank you sir uh, really thanks to you uh, you have given uh, all insights of ai machine learning its historical development advances of ai and machine learning future of ai uh, really wonderful lecture sir uh, uh, very beneficial to for all participant and we all so uh, thank you again thanks again sir so in this sequence uh, continuation of this uh, first technical session uh, today uh, is the first day so we are not giving any uh, tea break uh, so we are just we are continuing the next session uh, tomorrow onwards uh, we will schedule it and uh, the uh, first uh, tea break will be from uh, Uh, 12:30 to uh, sorry uh, 11 to 11:30. Uh, session will start from 9 to 11, and then 11 to 11:30 will be the first tea break, and 1:30 uh, to 2:30 will be the uh, lunch break, and session will end at 4:30. So attendance is compulsory. Uh, I again request to all participants uh, that attendance is mandatory and. AICT is watching the attendance also, and they are supervising all the activities of this uh, FDP. So, uh, uh, the next technical session for the next technical session, uh, I welcome Professor Abhay Saxena. Uh, Professor Abhay Saxena, sir, is Dean of School of Technology, Management, and Communication. Uh, he is a professor of computer science at Dev Sanskriti. विश्वविद्यालय हरिद्वार उत्तराखंड ही इज विजिटिंग प्रोफेसर ऑफ बुडापेस्ट बिजनेस स्कूल हंगरी नेशनल ओरमेसा यूनिवर्सिटी ताइवान ही हैज बीन अपॉइंटेड एज ऑनरी रिसर्च फेलो फॉर टू इयर्स ऑफ यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मलेशिया ही हैड ऑल्सो डिलीवर्ड टेक्निकल सेशन इन श्रीनवान यूनिवर्सिटी मलेशिया यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ मलेशिया यूनलिन यूनिवर्सिटी Taiwan, along with the contribution and participation in national and international workshop conferences across India and abroad. In this, he has 29 years of teaching and industry experience. He has authored 12 books. He has established couple of center of excellence in Vedic informatics, green computing at Dev Sanskriti Vidyalaya. At present, Dr. Saxena is live. time dedicated volunteer of all world gayatri parivar shanti kun under the aegis of pandit sri ram sharma acharya serving the community and mankind so i welcome again professor saxena sir please thank you dr thank you thank you dr sir uh, professor ashutosh bhatji and the entire fraternity of uttarakhand open university uh, i am thankful to Uh, honorable vice chancellor professor obs negi ji who has been in the morning and he has delivered a beautiful 
uh, thought on the lifestyle and how we can incorporate this technology into daily life. We just have heard Professor Durgeshpan, he is our mentor, he is a director of the School of uh, Technology and Computer Science at Uttarakhand Open University and also he is a mentor who has taken care of USERC and USAC in the different environments. So thank you very much, sir, for being so informative session and it is an eye opening for all, all the participants, I hope so. And I am also thankful to Professor R.K. Soni, Director of ACTI, Professor Jitain Pandeji, Professor H.S. Nagyal, Registrar, sir. So, in fact, we are in the uh, mid-session of the day one, where we are likely to take care of the certain activities. So, in the next one and a half year, half hour, we are likely to take certain activities in which pen and paper is being required. So I request all the participants to keep uh, keep track of a uh, neat sheet of paper and a pen ready with them so that we can check out certain activities while working in this FTP. So before I start, let's recite Gayatri Man. Gayatri is, is the primordial power which gives uh, right sets of instructions to the, not for us, but for all the human beings who are there with us or who are not with us. So uh, the Gayatri Mantra is basically a phenomena, a solution where we pray to the Almighty that kindly motivate our intellect towards the righteous path. So those who know, well, good enough. Those who doesn't, just pray for the humanity. Om Bhur Bhuvaha Swaha Tatsavitur Varenyam Bhargo Devasya Dhimahi Thiyo Yonaha Prachodaya In the divine presence of my almighty Guru Sattva Pandit Shri Ram Sharma Acharya Ji, uh, faculty members, uh, my fellow trainers, voice speakers, dignitaries and all the participants. I am Professor Havya Saxena and I am a dean in, this, in the capacity of School of Technology Management and Communication. And at present, I am at the Sanskriti Vishwitya. When I was just looking around the entire FDP, which is being laid out by Professor but I found that the entire narration is being set up so nicely. You will find ML algorithm by Vinay Rishipalji. You can find ML techniques by Dashna Pathak. You will find ML with Python by Sandeep Kumarji. ML with blockchain, Dr. Mayank Tagarwal is likely to talk about. Then ML with the industry 4.0, Dr. Rajiv Kumar and neural network that is likely to can by the Dr. Minal Nishai and Dr. Ashish Bhatt. So I was surprised. What should be my topic in order to put into this particular FDP? So my lecture, I preferred to choose the area that machine learning for the social well-being. Because my lecture is for those who are in the, in the field of computer science, but they have not gone to the S in the morning. Uh, uh, Professor R.K. Soni was telling that we are just working FDP for those who had not worked out anything with the AI in the due course of time. I, this is just for the idea because this, this presentation will be certainly in such a way that yeah, it is not from the book that I would likely to emphasize on this, that it is not from the book. And when I say machine learning uh, in the, it is, it is something like this. I want to quote Nick Bostrom a quotation that machine intelligence is the last invention that humanity will ever need to make. Like we want to make the intelligent machines. We want to machine that likely to take the environment in as many ways as we as we can. So my point is when we say Anubhadra Kartu Yanta Vishwata, it's a it's a phrase from the Rig Ved, Mandal Ek or Suk 89. Let the noble thoughts come to me from all direction. When I say that we are just going to talk about the machine learning in as many ways as we can, we are inviting those dignified, those uh, virtual uh, platforms, environments that let the noble thoughts come into our way and we are likely to churn them in next five days and we'd like to come out with certain sets of beautiful things which are helpful for the society. Like 
the potential of uh, potential benefits of ai are huge and so are the dangers when when professor pant was talking about all beautiful things of the ai the the another aspect is that how ai can be dangerous i will be touching that point also in the uh, coming hour but yes let's start the things from where professor pant have just ended up the technology starts with the social well being whether it is a wheel whether it's a fire whether it's a machine whether all the uh, industrial revolution to the bots the key thing is that we have to care for the society the technology that is for the last mile runner we are the educators we know most of the things of the artificial intelligence and we are using it in day to day life but the threat posed by the ai is also dangerous as it was given by bill gates and when we say that why the wheels why the fires why the machines they are the part of our technological revolution they are the part and parcel and you cannot deny the existence of them into the today's life when i said that so uh, the technology for the well being to for the social well being the key aspect is well being how to define the well being whether it is supposed to connect with others like we are on the uh, virtual platform connected with each other or we are active we are doing such and such activity or we are keep on learning 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 or we are just awareing ourselves or we are making it awareness about the environment about the technology what we are like you time or we want to help others this is the key the knowledge for the sake of knowledge if you learn something it is just a good for yourself when you use that knowledge into the practical world so that other can be helped by that then only the things are supposed to be the well being well the environment of well being is big enough from the mental capital on one end side and you can see the well being is on the other side we are accumulating the knowledge we are acquiring like to balance the imbalance of the life we need learning like uh, in the morning what we are listing that yes ai is being a bigger uh, platform and then machine learning deep learning ann svm lots of technologies has come into the scenario but what for is it just for a mental capital or is it for a well being for one and all that is the key of my presentation and when i said it like there is a small story of lord buddha he asked anand one of his uh, uh, anand to go and collect the water from the river so that he can drink it when anand went there he found the lots of women are there they are cleaning the clothes of so water is not up to the mark so he came empty handed so the asked why don't you brought the water and the reply well the water was there but it was not clean it was say the, the women are washing their clothes so what is dirty so let's wait for some time when ananda went again and this time the water was settled he brought the water uh, what would the drink that water and still what he, what the message he he want to give is that it is the mental capital when the there are there will be a number of people around so you are who are washing the clothes or washing the or uh, trying to disturb you or distract you in as many ways but once you are with you once you are connected with you then the things are likely going to be anyway n number of people are teaching um, artificial intelligence n number of people are teaching machine learning or deep learning but are they aware of themselves or they know the gravity what they are likely to put like as a teacher or as a preacher or as a guru in whatever capacity they are they must try to deliver the things in best of the way that can and it will come only and only when the mental capital is just for to help others like in the end we are likely to become a story that is true for one and all why not this story should be something something more potential something that is more critical in nature something that is more interesting in nature so when we said that well being that is a social well being or mental well being or physical well being or work well being like well being is there but when i said when i said it physically that means we are likely to take it into the physical world that is a body 
बॉडी शरीर को भगवान का मंदिर समझकर हम उसके आरोग्य की रक्षा करेंगे वी हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ बॉडी इन सच अट इज लाइक टेम्पल सेकेंडली इज द मेंटल वेलबींग मन ही मनुष्य नाम कारण बंधु वी नो इट माइंड इज दी ओनली Uh, you can say a friend, and when when man, the mind is only your destructive feature, so harness the mind. And when you say this social well-being, that is, we are the propagator of those. I am Bandura Nitikara Chaluche Sam Udar Charitra Nam Tu Vasudev Kudum Gam. We said that the the pupils who have a narrow vision, they only distinguish this is not good and this is good. Those who have a worth perfect vision. they always look like that whole world whole world is a bigger family and we belongs we proudly say that we belongs to that uh, uh, phenomena we belongs to that fraternize where, where we say that whole world is one family so is ai for the well being of everyone or we are discriminating ai as in the morning we are learning ai a uh, weak ai or we say a strong ai or we can say adaptive ai or we can say that uh, Connection between other. When you say for oh, work well-being, that is how you connect yourself, how you connect at the work, how you engage at the work. Can we use AI in the uh, working environment? Like we uh, we are thankful the AI CD is doing lots of work on say maybe thousand five hundred uh, FDPs in the uh, entire year. Can we come out something where we can make the people identify? why he or she is not working properly in an in her uh, working environment why she is not delivering or he is not delivering in the classes why he or she is not taking active participation in the institutional activities we have to figure out the practical adaptability of the ai into the day to day life and when i said it so we want to get it into this particular world the sojourn of technology was beautifully narrated by professor pant in the morning and i think we have learned an uh, whole scenario how the from the industrial revolution to the industry 5.0 like i wrote a just a paper on articulated human intelligence industry 4.0 a couple of years back you can just fill it out or maybe dr rajiv kumar who is likely to take the lecture he is likely to address these things but the technology is part and parcel of life whether we we are likely to take it or not like to take it it's not going to be any choice because this is enforced in our life from the futuristic like when when you say the bots in daily daily life we means that the people are likely to have some wisdom bots in the near future they are likely to be the technology by the people and for the people whatever technological advances we made in to the environment the key thing was technology by the people and for the people and if this is being missing into the technological aspect we are missing the main uh, stakeholder that is the human being what for this technology is it is a just in another aspect where we are likely to take the things or it is an aspect where the people are likely to adopt the technology willingly and that's the difference we have to make like predicting the future isn't magic i'm like it's a artificial intelligence the dave watchers words are very profoundly right that the future is not a magic as we have seen in the earlier slides in the 2049 we have a perfect article from the times magazine so how it is likely to be learning relearning or de learning these are the three beautiful aspects when you have a capacity to learn something you have to de learn and relearn this is how the hidden tribes works the like gary pasarov has been beaten by the particular uh, uh, computer or you can say with the help of ai the like it's not a, a matter of a day adaptive ai is supposed to be the part of part and parcel of ourselves into the day to day life because it is a, a, a must a need a must need for everyone to adopt it like we can say that uh, technology is being there in as many ways as we we work out but look out right from the merchantization to water power stream to the cyber physical world technology is being there now what 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 is cyber physical world 
like uh, i do remember that it, this word is coined by the ellen gill in 2006 when he said the computation communication and control by interaction with the real world the like computation communication and control and the interaction with the real world that's what the cyber physical world and believe me the bots are working into the similar scenario bots are meant for in the third generation to supposed to replicate the world now they are supposed to replace the human being or supposed to support the human being that is the key thing over here now while moving from the various generation because these slides are already being taken in the in the terms of uh, professor pan so let me jump out to the next level what is a learning phenomena when you say learning phenomena that means people are likely to learn they can learn in the technical way or non technical way without how confident you are into a particular atm machine or how confident you are while dealing with the ai programs that is a different aspects non technical person who is working in a cafeteria in a working in a gas station or working into a, a mall can have a basic learning adaptability and the person who is being in the field of computer science from last 30 to 40 years he will be hesitant or he may be hesitant in order to adopt those ai techniques so you cannot say the balance between the imbalance the right left brain or right brain or the combination of or deadly combination of that and then i do uh, like to remember a beautiful thing someone asked uh, stephen hawkins does what plays dies he said it very rightly yes what plays dies but sometime he throws the dice in such a place that we are not able to find it and that's a life my dear friends to find those dice which is being played by the god and he had thrown it in some place to find it from known to unknown and that's what the every algorithm is all about that's what the every technology is all about to find from the known to unknown or it can be a spiritual way from unknown to known that is a beautiful way so when i said it the learning lending can vary it into different aspects when i said it that they are the certain fast learners and there are certain slow slow learners look out if you run, run out to an environment where you can find the people are people are not comfortable in learning this ai techniques or into the day to day life into the bots interference in their personal life when i say it so that means there are certain aspects where an ordinary person can become extraordinary by learning certain sets of ai or certain sets of deep learning or certain sets of machine learning so these are the aspects that needs to be taken care in such a way that an ordinary person should always willing to learn the extraordinary things and to become extraordinary learning is a phenomena and everyone learns in a different style some learns with the words some learns with the visuals some learns with the musical auditory physical kinesthetic combination solitary social logical mathematical various ways of learning we are the teachers we are the community of the professors who are who would like to not to profess the thing but to demonstrate the thing in such a way that the student can adopt that thing into day to day life maybe it's logical maybe it's a mathematical or a social aspect of every like we the professors always says we the uh, uh, teaching fraternity always says that we make the students so how the students are likely to learn from the things let me take a simple example where the pupils are Uh, uh learning learning in as many ways learning from the uh, music notes like uh, the computer has designed the music which is likely to be popular in next 10 years and the the machine is being uh, delivering to us the uh, verbal communications which are making through when when we whenever we are going in, in abroad and with the person meeting the person who doesn't know our language and we are not able to understand his or her language we we depend on the google google translate so how this machine learns and adopt the things we are writing an email and suddenly certain things pops up hey you want to use these words because you had been using these words in the different emails these are the suggestive ai for us and how machine is learning because they are they are following the pattern what we are we are doing it how we are doing it how to perform the task what are the exceptional way to write or exceptional way to learn from that the machine is learning 
for dear friends let me uh, put up you a question first question what is like to be by you if you have train a machine which learning style you will prefer and why as i told you earlier itself there are various types of learning phenomena and then we we are uh, talking about machine learning so the first important aspect the question that self paced learning question came into my mind is that what are the key aspects that needs to be trained needs, needs to be learned by a machine in order to be trained are you thinking of something that is verbal or visual musical musical auditory physical kinesthetic social or a combination of one or two whatever you feel so please do write it so that it can be an easily you know, once you finish write, uh, writing then we can go ahead with the uh, another aspect of the life so if you have written on the neat sheet of paper now let's talk about the learning learning of the human with the machine that is important how the human learning is different from the machine learning what the type of output we are looking for flawless and desired output is being anticipated by each and every one of us like we want the capacity but it should be enhanced we want the capability but it should be improvised we know the phenomena easy and self learning an outcome that is to be desired to be flawless and this is how the every machine works in every human being works learning is a phenomena which is likely to be taken into a certain aspects which defines the difference between machine and human being and right from the 1940 when the conception of the uh, artificial intelligence was came into in the 1956 a beautiful conference which professor pant was talking to the bots which we are like you to take into a, on a 2050 where the we are living in a society society 5.0 where my next neighbor may be a robot like my uh, household activities taken by the robots if i have to fill up my gas at the gas uh, gas station the person who is standing at the gas station may be a robot or maybe my lift man is a robot maybe gatekeeper is a robot so learning will likely to be varied into this environment and that is the beauty of the nature that we have to learn in such a way that the output is always important we always uh, cry for the students why you are not learning why you are not learning and see you are not getting the proper marks in the class but we never ask the student what sort of problem he is facing sometimes he is afraid of the teacher sometimes he is afraid of the subject sometimes he is afraid of a particular uh, segment that is the student is not able to adapt we never care so my dear friends it is equally important while dealing with the machines just look around there are certain students who are human beings too they need to be addressed more effectively more prominently so that they can able to deliver the thing in best of the way that can they are also even be like being human being we 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 are into the world as a human being that is not our that is not our in our hand but being human is our choice why not to choose wisely why not to choose the things in such a way so that people can be happy that why we are looking for the people who are around us my dear friends when you said the granular of ai that as the professor pant has rightly pointed in the in the morning it should be the innovative the from the human interaction simulation process by the machine um, especially the computer systems like the the ai game is immense in nature but what for in the turing allen turing has seen talking about during the second world war he came up the concept of the replica of human human intelligence mccarthy uh, seconded the thought and 
in the 1956 Dartmouth conference, and the idea was to replicate the intelligence. The intelligence in the machine should be handed over in such a way that the machine can perform the humanly acts as wisely as everyone. But the bottom line is, look around the human beings which are around us. Maybe our sons, maybe our daughters, maybe we as the sons and daughters of our parents. We are varied in nature. We are varied in terms of knowledge. We are varied in terms of performance. So how can you articulate the machine in such a way that every machine should perform flawless? No, it's not possible. Right. Learning phenomena, understanding phenomena, behavior phenomena, it may vary from the artificial intelligence of a machine not to perform in such a way that every machine is the same. We are learning that machine has defeated another machine into a chess program. How? If the machine has the same set of caliber, same set of data sets, same set of performance, it should be delivered in the similar way. But that is not, not in the case. If one machine is winning and another is losing, that means either the data sets are not properly used or maybe the efficiency or performance of a particular machine is being not taken care of. So when I said, like, we always talk about um, uh, who is the father of AI, who is the, um, taking care of the fathers of AI, you can say Alan Turing or Jock McCarthy. But do we know something about the person who was Tabala Raj Gopal Raj Reddy? He was the person who is a profoundly a faculty at Stanford University and Carnegie Mellon University for 50 years. He's a computer scientist and he had the award of the Turing Award, uh, Turing award in 1994, the first Indian to aware to uh, who has achieved the Alan Turing Award. Raj Reddy. So he, he has worked out with the Triple IIT Hyderabad. And I must try to remember those things which comes into my scenario because AI is immense in nature and we always look best to guide us. But unfortunately, we Indians have also got that talent which can show the world that yes, AI is a one thing, but humanity, for the purpose of humanity, we Indians are way ahead than others. My dear friends, when you said that AI, it is a bigger subset, if you look around. It is a bigger subset as in a figure and the early AI is still excitement. Lots of excitement based that AI is coming into the scenario. Slowly and gradually in 1990s to 2010, we had started talking about the ML. And let, let, let me take this journey right as the Professor Pant was telling in the we said that Arthur Samuel of IBM, and he's a computer game for, he checkers in 1950, and he coined the term machine learning in 1950. Later, latest Niper problem came into the existence, basic pattern recognition. But we all know nearest Niper problems, 1960, feed forward or back propagation in 1970, and in multi-layer, uh, Adaptation has made the neural network more perfect. We have the term neural network. So it is something simulation of brains, the performance of the brains, and maybe Dr. Ashtosh and Dr. Mirani will tell us something more. But earlier, nearby 1980s, when AI was supposed to move away from the ML, AI that we can say they are for a uh, knowledge-based uh, applications and ML is supposed to training programs for the AI. For a decade, almost 10 years, ML was clueless. What to do? How to improvise? More and more researchers were on, on the aspects of AI, but ML has been left around. But once the, the boosting algorithm came into the scenario, the boosting algorithm, then to, which is likely to reduce the bias during the supervised learning. We all know how the neural network work and maybe the professors, when the ADA boost, Brown boost, total boost, logic boost, they came into scenario and suddenly the ML is the hot cake. Suddenly people are talking about, then speech recognition came into the, say maybe 
uh, where we are talking about the long term memory in 1997, then facial recognition in 2000 thing. And at present, ML is likely to be as defined by the University of Stanford. They said it very beautifully, the science of getting computers to act without being explicitly programmed. So the question is, second question, which I'd like to you to write on the neat sheet paper, why AI needs machine learning? We know that AI is a bigger scenario. It's a, it's a super set. ML is a part, DL is again a part. And, and so this is how it is likely to move. So when I said it that in this way, that AI is a part of, AI is the biggest uh, superset and ML and DL are a part of it. The question arises, the need of ML should be clearly defined. Maybe I can give you a couple of minutes so that you can write it down, then we can move ahead. So when we say that why machine learning, it is food thought for machine. When I said it, food thought, that means learning, adopting, and then performing. How we human beings perform? I was uh, told by one of my faculty, he was watching a TV and his kid was eight months who was, she was also watching the TV. And while watching the TV, there was a uh, channel that is related with the National Geographic. And, they, and then there was a video that was playing when the uh, loin was drinking water from the pond. All of a sudden, within the next five to 10 minutes, as he has told by my colleague, his daughter, was having a glass of water, she make it fell down and bring by that, that way, very similar way that the loin was drinking the water. He was shocked why the daughter is doing this thing. And suddenly he realized that the daughter was watching a video in front of, uh, uh, in, the, in, in the TV. And that is related with the, how the loin was drinking water. No one has taught the daughter how to bring them uh, drink the water in that way, but she poured it down and tried to swap it in a similar way as the line does. Well, beauty of the machine, machine can be worked out in as many ways. If I say how AI is likely to work or ML, DL, how they are differentiated from it, maybe in the due course of time, in coming scenarios, in the coming sessions, we will learn something more about. But AI is an umbrella, if you can say. And machine learning is a subset of AI. Machine learning is self learn based on algorithms. How machine is likely to learn the things. We can say the smart systems in the machine learning. AI works on ML only. But if you look at DL, that is a deep learning, deep learning, that is a ML on a large data set. It is a um, uh, deep learning is a part of ML and which is applied on a large data set. For example, driver is class. So, DA is again a subset of machine uh, of AI, but how it works, like from the uh, convolution neural network to the recurrent neural network or recursive neural network, only thing what is being deep learning is what that uh, we can take an example of virtual assistant, how the bots are likely to help us. So these are the things which are related with the, uh, with the functionality. And But ML is what learn and improve from the experience without being explicitly programmed. It is focused on the, that can learn on its own. So what are the things that, uh, that the ML is being talked about? Look up how the traditional program is being different from the machine learning. We had been learning C, C++, Java, and what? All these things were what? You need an input data. 
you say programming skill, programming technique, and you have the output. That is how every programming language or traditional programming works out. The ML is a bit different. The input data is different. Output data is also being treated, and we come up with the algorithm. So how the things are likely to be? I will take it by example in the coming slides. So you can write it now. The neat sheet, as, as I told you earlier itself, how human learning is different from the learning of a machine. When machine is likely to learn something, how? What are the aspects that are needs to be covered by the machine to learn like a human being? So AI, ML, and DL, these are the three things that we are likely to take. But we will focus more on the ML, because ML, that is machine learning, as our uh, entire session is on this particular aspect, how ML is likely to be helpful in the day-to-day -day life. Well, we have learned the prediction technology, image recognition, speech recognition, medical diagnosis, Finance and initial industry and trading that is being likely take by the Professor Pant in the uh, earlier session itself. So I'm not just more talking about on this. I will just tell you how we can use into the data type. There will be certain sets of algorithms that we are likely to, to learn. That is a supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, and purposely I have used the word intuitive learning. I will talk about this into the earlier part, into the later part, because when we said supervised learning, that means learning with the labeled data sets. Let's say, for example, we can say email, email spam. We have already defined a particular email that if it pops up into our mail, kindly send it to the spam section. So the different it is the data set is already been defined. If anything come from this source, it is to be spam. So this is supposed supervised when someone is being there to tell you, boss, this is the finite sets, and you have to use this only in order to make the things. Like we, we the teachers in the class, we use smart boards or so we um, or green boards or whatever chalk or dusters, whatever we are using it. And that is what? That's supervised learning. We want to train our students in such a way that they can perform whatever we are telling to them, they need to be executed. Supervised. Like uh, if you look at the linear regression, then you can say sales forecast can be a part of it. Uh, risk assessment can be a part of it. Uh, support vector machine, if you look out, then the image classification is a part of it. Decision pre where predictive analysis or the pricing is being talked about. These are all the aspects of the supervised learning. Unsupervised learning, the second aspect is that that is discovering patterns in unlabeled data where the machine did the training by itself. Like when you talk about supervised learning, that there is uh, input and there is a training procedure and then the output is being there that is supervised but when you talk about unsupervised data unsupervised learning that there is only input and the machine do all by itself and give the output so the difference is the k-mean clustering you can say the performance monitoring of a student performance monitoring of a uh, employee then searches on the searches intent look out when you you find the recommended videos when you find the recommended uh, pattern of clothes when they recommended uh, way of activities how it is coming to it is a just a way through the machine is learning everything whatever the small um, uh, movements you are moving making into the in word of internet everything is being logging based on your inputs based on your choices based on the selections that you have made the recommended things are likely to be the intent of the searcher. And this is how the unsupervised learning. Third thing is the reinforcement learning. We will be learning more on this, but that is learning most on based on the feedback or reward. 
when you say it so that you learn to play chess by win or lose it doesn't matter the, but the feedback if the machine loses then the feedback is being there that boss you have not won this particular um, uh, game you have to improvise yourself so it is reinforcement enforcement reinforcement so that the feedback or reward is being there so that he or she is performed like you can improvise your student also like if if you uh, score eight out of ten into my next sets i am likely to give you a, a nice set of my own book on uh, and to write the, the reward will make him or her to perform so in a similar way when we talk about the machine algorithms machine is learning either by its own or uh, by under a circular train or into the reinforcement that is likely to be take like learning this is Q learning if you look out that is uh, policy decisions or consumption reduction or model based value estimate estimations like estimating parameters will be into the concept so sl usl and rl i will take intuitive learning into the next part so now the fourth question is for you which algorithm you will prefer while training the machine and why? Whether you will prefer supervised, whether you will prefer unsupervised, or whether you will use reinforcement. I'll give you a couple of minutes to check, write it down, then I'll go, go ahead with that. But sir, we have time hai Navi. But sir? So this is how the entire canvas of the supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement is all about. The classification, regression, classification can be fraud detection. So how you can, the banks are using this technology in order to uh, check out that the fraud is being made or not. Mostly in the financial segments, email spam detections or diagnostic in terms of the uh, cancer or various other the uh, medicinal point of view, image classification. So these are the supervised learnings, regression where the risk assessment as I told earlier, or the score prediction, the score which is likely to be by the student or by the particular share market and then the uh, super, uh, unsupervised learning is a dimensionality reduction text mining face recognition big data visualization image recognition from out of the 100 million faces one face is being recognized over there clustering uh, biological biology then city planning target market, marketing the robots navigation comes into the reinforcement so this is the scenario that is likely to be into in aspects where the things are likely to in such a way how ml can be applied into the daily life that is equally important because we have to understand the psychology of the human being we have to understand the philosophy that he or she is following we have to understand the tradition the culture the human intelligence and once you understand it then it should be delivered in such a way that the individual person can understand our machine can understand in the name language utility or life booming activities like applications are immense in nature but bottom line is how you take the machine learning activities into the day to life that is likely to be different when you say the ml in the real life the traffic alerts we are using google maps in most of the scenarios with the how machine is likely to be learned that is important so with the help of historic data with the help of real-time techniques like uh, firstly it will take about where you are your average traveling speed of your car or bike and whatever more traveling then we answer the question does the still routes still have the traffic if it is a daytime or night time any specific occasion may be some mega is being there or some uh, congregation is being going on there and based on these informations beautiful information precise information of the bus or metros are being 
the traffic alerts are being posted into your Google Map. So it is not a big thing, but yes, dealing with voluminous number of data into the real time environment is a big thing, and that's where the machine is being preferred over human being. We cannot do these historic data, real time techniques into the similar scenario, but the machine is able to do it. So, and that's why we, whenever there is, we are stuck in certain places, we just go to one devata that is called Google devata. Like they have, a, like Google has all the answers that is, but still there are certain sites which are uh, more powerful than Google. That is uh, uh, Web 3.0, that is Pink Talk Road. You can Google it on, uh, and then you can come to uh, uh, understanding of Web 3.0. Image recognition. That is equally important as, as was studying in the morning by Professor Frank. Human image recognition. Look out how we uh, recognize the human face. Like uh, suddenly someone appear in front of us and ask, sir, do you remember me? I have to go back into my subconsciousness. Do certain sorts of data mining into my subconscious mind and try to catch up with n number of faces which are in the certain instructions or maybe into the simple lines that is being stored over there. And out of with certain uh, data extraction techniques, I just like some something comes into my, my mind suddenly from the subconscious to the conscious, and I am able to recognize the face or I am able to uh, speak of the name. Look how the machine works. Like it is, it is just an image, but it is more than image. Some arrays with the numerical values, and that's why the image processing algorithm to look for the like patterns in the digital images, how it is a video or graphic or still an images. The algorithms, the computer works on the pattern recognition and the machine. Like for a simple looking, then uh, when you when you look around some uh, looking of a particular piece, it is 80 nodal points on the human face and much and machine learning technologies to measure the variables on the person face. So for think of for a single image, there are 80 nodal points. And in a particular day, how many images that machine is likely to be captured? So the processing, the understandability, the data set, the performance, the accuracy, and that is equally important while the real time uh, examples are there. Sentiment analysis. I love this aspect because Sentiment analysis is something which is we all are very good in. Look around when when our father is furious or in a, a very bad mood, we try to avoid him. When we move around our mother in such a way that the mother usually asks, why you are roaming around? The sentiments has to be picked up at the right pace at the right time. And this is how the every machine works. The classification of the sentiments, whether the person is into negative, whether it is a neutral or in positive, the moods differ. So when the machine is being able to you know, work out on certain aspects, the, how the opinion mining is being worked out. If you look out on your uh, Twitter account or if you look out on the Facebook, how you are dealing the, with the words that are uh, always have an emoticon over there. So the, what machine is using? Machine is using these models to groom themselves, to analyze the sentiments based on the words. It may be near, it may be not. That is can be another thing. But in most of the cases, the machine is able to pick the right sentiments from there. And here the NLP came into the scene, natural language processing. When you said that person is positive, that means the brilliant efforts, guys, I love your work. When you say good job, so maybe, maybe or may not be. I'm not satisfied. I'm totally dissatisfied with the service. The words are same, but the but the emotions or the sentiments may vary. So right from the face recognition to the uh, emotions or the opinions mining, they, these are the real life examples. Like we all are aware of the Google Translate. Google uses. Like uh, a couple a couple of years back when I was in a Taiwan or in Hungary, uh, dealing with the uh, local vendors is always a typical. 
here the google is supposed to help us a google neural machine translation with absorbing lots of words or thousands of languages the words are being absorbed over there words are absorbed over there and the dictionaries are there and they transmute any sentence in the desired language like this is somewhat the uh, real aspect of the machine the machine learning so if i doesn't know the french like if i said it i am more probable powerful so google so gcs plus to say a particular google i'm no good in uh, talking about the french but if you are able to speak these words into a french new person he or she will be understand what you want to say and it will serve the purpose although there is a uh, there is a language of emotions there is a language of of not saying any words still the person is able to understand but that needs a deep 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 learning or maybe a scientific aspect cannot define how the words can be expressed by eyes how the emotions can be expressed without saying any word the monhi bhasha that is that is equally uh, undefined way into the machine but still the people are able to talk in this way also so like these are the examples which makes that machine learning is important into day to day life and we must believe that machine is likely to help us in as many ways we all know siri we all know google assistant we usually talk to them the virtual private assistant are supposed to be the lifeline of most of the uh, technocrats and most of the management gurus because we 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 depend on the machine we said google assistant why not to wake me at 8 6 am i know i am sleeping at 3 3 am because the deadline pressure was there the stress was there the performance is there but still that 6 am time is need to be because i have to rush out for my job Siri navigate me to my favorite restaurant, and Siri is likely to navigate you. So from turning on the smart applications, booking and and on a Uber command, we how often we use Siri book me a Uber. I want to go. This is so Siri last. What type of location you are likely to? What type of car you are looking for? And you just give the precise instructions, and machine is able to do it. So think of these virtual private assistants. maybe the day is not very far when the virtual assistants are likely to help you out in uh, getting the digital nirvana and i list up of digital intuitions also so the next question which i would like you to write is that does machine can develop an intuitive learning we talk about the intuitive intuitive learning that intuitions are there and we feel so that yes machine can predict the things this is how the patient is likely to be so i am giving you a couple of minutes you just write down can machine develop an intuitive learning so when i said intuitive that means to force see certain things which are not available in the data set to see those things which are in such a way that we are not able to figure it out we are able to figure it out but other can'ts so this is how likely we so when i said it intuitive that means to make an information that is in abstract nature maybe the original oriented towards a particular theory to look the big picture and grasp the particular things like intuition is something like that that the sensex is likely to be around 1 lakh if i say it something like this people may say that he is a fool but if i can intuit and tell you that in the next one year the sensex will be like this or oh, then then you will realize oh, that person that he was talking about the sensex is like it to 1 1 lakh is, was true why not i make that point at the time why not enter the money into the time intuition is what where we were able to diagnose the things which is likely to happen so intuitive is always talking about the future the outcome of the product the development of the particular course or the particular uh, hours where we are able to do it something extraordinary so 
if the machine, I'm using the word if, if the machine is able to adopt these things into the daily life, then how the things will be like distant intuition. I find this word very, very important and I found it uh, very interesting also. The ability of AI system to make the right decision in the conditions where the source data are clearly not sufficient to make a rational choice. Even wrote a complete paper on this in those overnight. And I feel so. This is where we must think of the digital intuition or the machine learning to be foresee those things which are likely to happen. And I think um, deep learning is emphasis is more on this. The machine can intuit. The machine can intuit, and machine can make predictions which are likely to happen in terms of uh, individual performance, in terms of individual um, objective, or maybe the organization goal, or maybe the course which we are likely to start into our university. Why? How? When? And the possible the aspects which are which needs to be taken care. So when I said digital intuition that it is likely to be in reality in coming days. And believe me, when I said predicting the future isn't a magic, uh, it is all because of AI, what the Dave Waters says in way back, he meant by the digital intuition because AI is supposed to help ML and sub ML is supposed to be taken care by the DNA. And this is how this surgeon is likely to be going on. So there are certain aspects of different um, uh, apps that you may likely to take uh, in your uh, in due course of time. Like before this, I just want to uh, talk about the second side of the AI, the coin of AI in favor, the side not in favor. Look out, we have totally created AI to take care of our life whether it is an academic performance, whether it's institutional performance, outcome of a particular course, or the outcome of a particular employee in our institution, or maybe uh, likely to be the programs or the technology which is, which is likely to hit the market. The thing around when AI is likely to create dangerous contents, the contents which are likely to create a walk in the news, which is likely to create dissemination uh, based on a certain facts or discrimination. AI started physical harm or discrimination, then what will happen? The question is like AI is being there. AI is supposed to take care of all our activities. But if AI is supposed to harm the human being or AI is likely to discriminate as we are discriminating the, our students in, in ways, then how the scenario will be? It will be worst scenario. AI creates a dependent relation on machine. The relationship the machine should be healthy in nature. But if that relationship, like mood syndrome of machine, that's what I'm talking about. Machine, if you are, if you say something abusive to the machine, if you behave rational with the machine, machine say, I'm not going to perform now for you to do, do it yourself. Uh, let your city, maybe city say something, do it yourself. Why, if you abuse me, I'm not likely to perform. The relationships also like, like dependency is here. We, we usually use the different aspects of the uh, digital uh, uh, budgets or the private assistance to do this. They open the, uh, like uh, switch on the AC, like uh, over, uh, just uh, maintain the temperature in the refrigerator. Many things are in the household activities that are likely to be governed by our private assistants, digital private assistants. And if they are likely to say that, that we are not likely to perform in such a way because your behavior is not up to the mark, then it can create a serious trouble for the world because AI is being everywhere. Like we said, the privacy. If AI starts, infringes on our privacy, then how we are likely to be. Like if AI develops all its own machine learning algorithm 
to invade our privacy, whatever I am eating, what, how I am moving with my friends, or maybe the relations, or with my family, my wife, my daughter, or my son, and everything is being like uh, into taken care by AI. And if machine starts invading in our privacy, what is likely to be taken over there? Another question is, we know AI is good for the diagnostic. We know AI is good for the all the uh, med medicine, all the medicinal environment or the, uh, the sophisticated environment of the healthcare. What happened when AI is likely to be used to make us sick? Machine is there. But if machine starts making us human beings sick, then how you are likely to deal it? We are, we are accusing n number of people or because of the COVID-19 that they are responsible for this type of problems. But if AI is being used to make the human being sick, who is likely to take the responsibility? Who is likely to be responsible for that? Unfortunately, we cannot look for the person who has created this AI because he has not created this for the, uh, for the let's say, uh, not for well-being of human being. He has created for the machine to be helping hand of the society. A machine can think X and in the wisely or a machine can uh, actuate the things. Like if the machine becomes more intelligent than human being, then what will happen? So again, in aspects where everyone should be aware of. Well, dealing with the machines is good enough. But if I look out in the family, if your son or daughter suggests something to you, you become short tempered and try to say the words, yeah, mujhe samjha. I had been in the computer science for the last 40 years or 30 years. And you are telling me how to use it, but they were not wrong. Think of when the machine become more wiser than us. Then what will happen? Are we going to suffocate ourselves? Are we going to confine ourselves within a room and say, no, we are, we are done? No, that is not true, my friend. Or maybe the AI program for war, war with human beings, war with the entire humanity, or war with the machine and human beings. Think of the scenario. And these, these uh, topics make us, gives us goosebumps. Okay, what for this AI is all about? We haven't heard that AI is likely to interfere in our personal and professional life. And think of the scenario when we professors are talking about maybe in the next FDP after 10 or 20 years, the machine is delivering the things and we human beings are listening. That is likely to be happening because machine is having that intelligence. And when we talk about the machine learning, that means the machine is improvising itself by learning various phenomena. Whatever is being recorded on this FDP, or all the professors who are just giving the beautiful presentations from IIT, IIM, or different aspects of the university, their knowledge is being acquired. Machine learned from that. And when the next FDP, after 10 years, you, the machine is likely to deliver. So this is a biggest scenario where everyone think of yeah, what type of activity we should take, how we should take, and let's try to make up certain applications which are good for the global well-being. When I said it, application for social well-being, uh, there are certain uh, aspects which I have put it over here. Application for global peace and harmony. What this application will be? There will be certain factors that you have to keep in track of yourself. Maybe the psychological factors, social factors, physiological factors, cultural factors, or the global factors, which are making these uh, factors, uh, which are responsible for the global well-being, or we can say global peace and harmony. What are the variables? Dependent variables or independent variables? When you say the dependent variables, they are the lifestyle, but they are based on the values. When you talk about the virtues, then the dependent variables will quality of life. What is the correlation between these factors and the variables? And when you said harmony, harmony with the self, harmony with the uh, nature, harmony with the living being, harmony with the non-living being, these are the beautiful aspects that you need to take in care before developing any good application for the social well-being. When you said, how will you train a machine? When you said, how you will train a machine, then maybe a, do a 
supervised data sets like social structure can be taken care of cultural structure and the its relevancy into the day-to-day -day scenarios can taken off human behavior data sets is also being used or relation uh, rational and irrational behavior can be a supervised data sets when you say unsupervised learning for this particular application then the behavior of an individual is important performance of a team or product quality these are the unsupervised learning or these are the unsupervised uh, actions that the machine is likely to take and when the reinforcement we talked about then the feedback from a particular student's performance maybe from the peers maybe from the parents maybe from the uh, other teachers and this is how the machine is likely to develop this app for the social well-being then maybe technology you can use python neural network spm that is again the second when you said about the digital nirvana knowledge dissemination is one thing because acquisition of the knowledge is one and how you disseminate into the different aspects maybe the ubiquitous computing came into the scenario maybe the learning understanding behavior what we are learning in the morning from the data data then it become information then the knowledge and it become wisdom so can we have some apps for the wisdom alert wisdom hotbots or wisdom boards when you said the digital nirvana then there are certain prerequisites the machine will check what are the prerequisite in order to attain the nirvana what are the factors the social factors family factors individual factors within or without factors these are likely to be taken care then how is likely to be nirvana so we can say the predefined sets or innovative sets that are likely to train the machine what will the end product outcome the inner satisfaction the contentment the quality of life these are the aspects which will come once the machine is able to divide, design this digital nirvana application or application for the containment coordination and the uh, commitment the three aspects which is needed in order to every employee to perform every teacher to perform every student to perform and if you come and come up with certain uh, social well-being aspects like what are the factors for the containment coordination and commit maybe the social factor in which environment the boy or girl is doing what are psychological factors whether she is passing or he is passing a trauma or maybe in a a more friendly environment what are the emotional what are the behavior and factors how it is correlated whether he or she is aggressive or not aggressive submissive or maybe performer or non performer optimistic hopeful hopeless these are the various correlations the process is maybe a need theory a boy or girl the needs is not being satisfied that's why he is not contented he is not coordinating and he is not committed towards anything the improvisation in terms of knowledge improvisation in terms of performance improvisation in terms of adaptive data set that the machine needs in order to make the student more ontos then training of the mind body and soul so the in the in the every aspects you can look out the ai ai is being there to support us and how we use it more sensibly that will make the difference so dear friends what is likely to be quality of life whether to be ai whether to be a part of ai or guiding ai that is that is a need of the art like a million dollar question is that kim karanam yantram anushikshan when you said it why machine learning in sanskrit it is ki kis karan se hum machine learning seekh rahe hain the answer is very very simple for the global well being and personal requirement lok kalyanam cha atma parishkaram jab tak technology ka upyog logon ke hit mein nahi hoga jab tak log technology ka upyog social well being ke nahi hoga wo kitni bhi achhi technology ho kitne bhi sophisticated ho kitne bhi billion dollars aap us pe kharch kar dijiye wo apna purpose serve nahi kar payegi sirf sirf ek hi baat se karegi कि वो लोक कल्याण के लिए होनी चाहिए आत्म परिष्कार के लिए होनी चाहिए इट इज फॉर द ग्लोबल वेलबींग एंड द पर्सनल रिफाइनमेंट देन एंड ओनली इट इज लाइकली टू सर्व द पर्पस बट सब दो बज रहा है तो मेरी घड़े के हिसाब से समय हो गया बट सर जी सर जी सर दो बज रहा है तो शुड आई माइंड इट आप हाँ जी सर जी सर ठीक है तो एस आई Told you earlier, friends, that 
technology is supposed to take care of us and when we said application for social well being think of humne technology banayi hai technology ne hame nahi banaya and that is the key aap agar insaan hai to insano ko zarur sochiye ki uh, what for this technology is who is likely to be benefited by this like kehne ko to main bahut sari चीजें आपको बता सकता था बायस डेटा सेट्स हैं या लैक ऑफ डाइवर्सिटी इन वर्क फोर्स है ए आई ब्लैक बॉक्स है या डिजिटल डिवाइड है ऐसे कई एस्पेक्ट्स हैं जिन पे हम घंटों चर्चा कर सकते हैं पर मुझे बड़ा ही फील पर्सनली दैट देर आर सम ब्यूटीफुल पर्सन हु आर लाइकली टू टेक दी एफ इन मोर प्रोग्रेसिव एंड माई जॉब वॉज टू सेट द पेस एटलीस्ट एक बेस बना देना जहां से प्रोफेसर विनय प्रोफेसर दक्षा डॉक्टर संदीप मयंक जी डॉक्टर राजीव जी मृणाली जी और प्रोफेसर आशुतोष भट्ट जी अब उन चीजों पे आपसे बात करेंगे कि हाउ द मशीन लर्निंग कैन बी अडोप्टिव इन टू डे टू डे लाइफ वॉट आर द वेज थ्रू विच वी कैन टूज टेक्निक्स ऑन द ट्रेनिंग सेट्स दैट इज इम्पोर्टेंट so whether it is talking about the neural network environment whether it is talking about the deep learning or adaptive learning aspects or whether it is talking about how ml is being implemented with the help of python so with these words uh, thank you very much for being so kind to me and listen properly and i'm thankful to once again uttarakhand open university and the entire uh, uh, team under professor pants and um, thank you very much for being so kind to me thank you thank you very much thank you sir thank you very much uh, you have covered all aspects of this uh, machine learning and you have um, described about learning phenomena machine learning with real life example intuitive learning social well being for social well being so many topic topics you have covered so really it's very uh, knowledgeable for all the participant and thank you once again so i request all the participant if there is any query then you can ask in chat box and the next session will start from 3 o'clock so tomorrow onward it will start from 2:30 so today uh, we will start the next session from 3 to 5 pm so the next session will be taken by professor uh, sandeep kumar iit gurki from iit gurki uh, department of computer science and engineering so uh, thank you once again and we will be back after one hour at 3 pm so thank you again sir thank you abhay sir thank you very much thank you very much sir good hmm. to all of you hmm. till the time we have given you uh, given you the uh, link of attendance in the uh, whatsapp group of the participant so you can fill the uh, attendance thing thank you thank you once again uh the expert of this third technical session is professor sandeep kumar from iit roorkee so professor sandeep is connecting within a minute so please be in the link
we have given you the attendance link you are in your whatsapp group in the participants whatsapp group so be ensure that you have filled that attendance link of technical session 1 and technical session 2 welcome back in third technical session of day 1 so first of all i welcome professor sandeep kumar from iit gurki professor sandeep is the expert of this third technical session so sir we are welcoming you professor sandeep thank you sir thank you professor bhat thank you thank you, thank you. so uh, dr sandeep kumar is currently working as an associate prof professor in department of computer science and engineering indian institute of technology gurki he has published about 60 research paper in international and national journal and conference he has written three books and some book chapters with springer and has filed five patent ipr he is member of board of studies of various universities and institution he is currently handling multiple national and international research consultancy project he has received outstanding faculty award from iit roorkee young faculty research fellowship award from meity nsf tcpt early adapter award 2014 15 ITS Travel Award and others. He was recently invited as panelist in Webhav Summit of Government of India. His area of interest includes semantic web, web services, and software engineering. He is senior member of IEEE as well as ACM. So I welcome Professor Sandeep again. Thank you, sir. And thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Over to Professor Sandeep. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, you can share your PPT. I have yes, given you the co-host. Okay. okay. Thank you. Right of co-host. Okay. Thank you, Professor Bhatt. Thanks a lot for the nice words, and uh, we can see that it's really a timely event as far as uh, the usefulness of artificial intelligence and machine learning is concerned in the different domains of our daily life even 
so i hope uh, uh, i am audible so in between if you find that there is some uh, difficulty in listening or any other issue you can interrupt me all right yes, so sir. Yeah, okay okay thank you sir so uh, all the audience like anyone from the audience side am i audible yes sir you are uh, audible okay. Uh, okay i was thinking that somebody from the audience will respond okay any anyway not a problem okay so i am sharing my screen okay thank you thank you so i got the response from many of you in the chat so that's great okay thank you thank you professor saha professor prihar professor nandi thank you okay so i am sharing my screen yes is my screen visible sir sir is yes. your screen is very clear sir okay, okay. Thank, clear, sir. thank you thank you okay so we will start our discussion now so if anyone is facing any problem any difficulty in listening any one of you can interrupt me and uh, first of all a very good afternoon to all of you and i hope uh, i am taking your time uh, just after the lunch you might be free so it's normally a laser time and we are killing your time so Uh, really sorry for that but ultimately we have gathered here to discuss something and uh, the topic is very timely as far as we can see it is artificial intelligence and machine learning however there are so many courses which are happening in this topic in this domain but one thing uh, that is really laudable that is really good is that uh, there are there is one keyword in that in the title of the course that is societal societal needs so this is very important thing ultimately that has been touched in the scope of this course and uh, as i was looking upon the uh, different lectures the schedule that has been shared with all of you more or less in all the lectures uh, the emphasis is on how we can use the ai and machine learning for the society for the betterment of society so one of uh, very good discussion has already been done on this topic in the mo morning hour and uh, in many of the upcoming lectures in the remaining days you will get a lot of things uh, in the cases about how to use machine learning i see the many lectures who are taking care of lot many technical details how to use the different models neural network and all that Uh, how to build the program how to run the models how to uh, have the different kind of learning models and techniques for the uh, technical research and uh, as well as development purposes but today in my discussion our main emphasis will be on how to find out the different opportunities in our day to day life in which the artificial intelligence and machine learning can be used for and basically uh, in line with the theme of the course which is talking about the societal needs so i will try to discuss about the indian society society in which we are living and the need of the that how these methodologies which are really emerging can be useful in the betterment of indian society or uh, i will say uh, uh, for the overall development of the country and there are many things that uh, you will be able to correlate it's not that it's simply like uh, i am discussing the thing and this it does not seems to be very practical i will try to discuss with you the things which seems to be really practical as far as the existing scenario is concerned as far as the recent advancements are concerned which has have which has happened in the last decade i will say in the indian perspective so first of all i would like to uh, uh, tell you that uh, it is not a one way lecture right it is basically a discussion 
as i can see most of you are faculty member at different places or the senior research scholars the phd students so all of our having a very different perspective dependent upon, upon our domain of work in which the artificial intelligence and machine learning is helping and you are master of your work you are master of your domain so our basic purpose at this platform is to discuss our perspective how we can contribute in that domain with the help of these technologies so i will try to put my perspective for some of the domains that uh, uh, that that i might be knowing or i might have learned but you might be having many practical implications many practical issues and the results as well as the experiences that might be with you by your experience and you can tell it to others so this platform is also open to all all of you can discuss so in between also you can interrupt and share your views so i really want that it is a show of discussion platform not a lecturing platform for others right so if uh, you will be presenting your views to others it will be really useful to the others as well as to you that it might be the scenario that you might be getting some good collaborators to this platform right and it has happened in the past i have seen many times that through these uh, courses many good collaborators many good opportunities happen and you are able to put up many good works for publication as well as for patents and projects so that's why it is best to discuss it is best to put your views right so whatever my views are i will try to discuss with all of you most of these things that i will be discussing with you these are normally referred from our front end past works right so which are uh, mostly available on the web uh, in the form of research papers uh, as well as the front work of uh, my students so one thing i would like to discuss with all of you we can see that uh, the ai and machine learning is uh, in itself is very much uh, emerging and is very much increased in many different research problems in our country these days wherever you will see like whatever is your domain even if you are from non computer science uh, disciplines or engineering or sciences you will find that in chemical engineering in biotechnology in mechanical engineering I, i i cannot find any domain in which nowadays ai and machine learning is not happening so that's why basically it is just like you want to understand uh, the english language to understand the different books of engineering you are now trying to understand the ai and ml to go into the research details of the different domain it's it's similar to that one that has happened so in this discussion i will try to indicate to various research problems that can be worked upon in different domains of research with the help of ai and ml right so i hope that by the end of the discussions many of you will be having some new problems of research in which you can work upon or many of you will have more refined version of the problem that you already had or more broadened version more scope of the work that you already been doing so that is our overall objective of this session and that should be very smooth like i am not saying that i will open up so many new solutions for you or so many new algorithms for you no we will just try to revise you remind you so many new areas of research in which ai and ml can be used so you can combine this discussion with the various discussions that you will have in the other lectures and probably at the end of the course you will have many fruitful solutions as well right and at the end of this lecture if you are scolding me that no sir has not given any new algorithm or new solution 
then it's acceptable. It's expected from my side. I'm expecting that you will have many unanswered questions that how to handle this problem. So you will have to explore that. You will have to find the solution. These are the problems that you can tackle in future for your research work. This area is now even increased by many government initiatives. So that's why even at the administrator level, this topic is very much increased. Like even at our institute, we are getting day-to-day -day, uh, uh, input and uh, uh, like I will say, uh, call from the different government agencies to train the even the administrative people in the area of machine learning and data analytics. Probably due to the reason that uh, the administration is looking upon that in future there might be the uses of many softwares and devices in which data will play a major role. And the analytics can help you in so many policy decisions. And that can be helped on with the help of knowledge of machine learning. So due to that reason, this topic is like, has become very important from all perspective. Like even if you are a decision maker, even if you are a faculty member or a researcher or a student, in all the different perspective, this has become really important. So that's why I will try to discuss this topic in the light of digitization in the country, in any country. I have taken the example of digital India and uh, why I have taken, it's not that it will be just talking, we will be just talking about the uh, humanitarian issues in digital India or humanities and social science issues. You will see that whatever research anybody is doing in the world is ultimately called as successful if it is used somewhere in the society, right? And I will never say that in your PhD or in your day-to-day -day research activities in the academia, directly we are able to develop something. Most of the time we are not able. That is directly useful for society. But in one way or another way, indirectly it is having the impact on society and in some of the projects which are really happening in the society might be having some input from your side as well, directly or indirectly. So that's why even we are doing very poor technical problems for technical research like modifications of some algorithm or even this new algorithm, even in those cases, you will find that it's too sense and its true benefit is achieved if it is applied in some domain of work which is ultimately useful to some societal needs. So this digitization of country is a very big structure in which so many societal needs will happen. And believe me, that will help you to get so many good problems if you try to understand its structure and try to understand it in very generic sense. So I will try to cover upon that uh, within, let us consider uh, initial 15 to 20 minutes. And then correspond, and along with that, I will try to pick up some of the problems that can be worked upon for the uh, uses of uh, AI and ML. So if we look upon the vision of Digital India, then I, I have used this uh, resource from the Digital India website itself. And it's very much standardized, right? I am not uh, that I am just favoring something, but it's it's true, like it's uh, very well specified as per the IEEE standards and the definitions of uh, the smart systems, smart country or digital society. Yes, so that in due to that reason, it is very much applicable in the generic sense. We cannot say that it's just only applicable for India. So that's why most of our discussions can be replicated in the generic sense. So if we look upon the vision, then its vision is saying the vision of Digital India program is to transform India into a digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. So why I am just picking up these keywords, you can see from this vision there are two important 
one of one of most important keyword is empowered society right and knowledgeable economy so what i want to tell you that many times many of you might be working in many different domains of work might not be working in the area of em ai ml and many of us are having in our mind that yeah, this is a very different domain right and uh, my work might not be very much applicable in this domain or if i am applying for any research funding then my work is uh, let us consider in the area of networking or even in chemical engineering so it is not related to digital india and uh, this call of project or this call of papers is very much related to digitization but see that digitization in this sense is saying that whatever you are doing if it is helping in the empowerment of society through the digitization or it is helping to generate a more knowledgeable economy means the economy which is empowered with the help of knowledge and digitization then it is the vision under the vision of digital india so more or less most of the works that everybody is doing that will be very much related to this broader aspect and it will cover so many new things so many topics of research within its broader scope so from that sense if you will look upon the vision areas of digital india it is put up in three different key vision areas one is digital infrastructure to every citizen then governance and services on demand then digital empowerment of citizens now as a researcher who is seeking for the opportunities in ai and ml we have to see that yes these are key vision areas and we need to find out that how in these vision areas we can generate the improvement we can cause the improvement with the help of the users of ai and ml that is our objective for this discussion right so all of you can also ping me in between can interrupt me in between and tell me yes what you find so these are the di pillars digital india pillars which are specified under the digital india program of government so you can see that nine pillars are specified it is even more advanced nowadays one is broadband highways then universal access to mobile connectivity then public internet access program then e governance then e kranti then information for all electronics manufacturing it for jobs and early harvest program now if you look upon these minutely you will find so many problems and opportunities in which you can apply the ai and ml so i will now start with that part and you will find out so many research problems to work so first one is broadband highways so for getting into the detail of any research domain in which you want to apply anything for the sake of research for generating some good outcome firstly we need to understand that now you can see that this initiative is saying that we need to have broadband all for all in the rural area as well as urban roughly we can say for everyone in the country right everyone in the society right so now there are many initiatives which are happening in this direction uh, which are based on this broadband highways concepts on like nkn swan all these are initiatives which are helping happening now you can see that one point that is very important in this scenario is that through this perspective through this pillar we are assuming that everyone is connected to the internet which is a very good and strong assumption in the favor of your research in ai and ml consider this scenario when you were doing the research in ai and ml about 10 years back at that time when you were developing let us consider any application where you were trying to 
use some data and do some prediction for the uh, villagers in the country or in the hills, hill areas, remote areas. Then it was said in most of the work that you are submitting either for publication or project funding, most of the time it will be said that how you can assume that this farmer will be having internet connectivity, how your work is practical. It is not like if you are submitting in some good places, uh, leave about uh, uh, those uh, like journals or conferences which are publishing everything. So if you are putting up some good places in the review, these type of comments were happening. And it's not only in India, it was happening throughout the world, right? In many, if we just it's the sake of different time domain, different time range when it was happening for other countries when in India. So based on this pillar, based on this initiative, we can say that now uh, most of our population is connected to internet. So automatically our problem domain has increased. Like if you want to do something for the farmer, you want to do weather protection for the farmer, right? And we are trying to have some app which is developed based on machine learning models like using TensorFlow. And we are saying that yes, this app will give the weather prediction to customer, to the farmer on real time basis. Or similarly, we are generating some project in which uh, the, uh, the farmer is able to get uh, the information about the soil, soil moisture, well, let's consider, or, or the health of the crop, crop health monitoring system. So then you can easily now consider that, yes, it's a practical problem and it will be very helpful to society at the end. And I can easily use AI and ML nowadays through these remote uh, systems as well because internet connectivity is very good. So that is possible due to this initiative. So you can take the sport of this initiative and get so many good ideas because you think that yes, in now the reachability of the internet is there in, at the villages and the hill stay, hilly areas, remote areas. So those people who are having some problems now which we can solve, and automatically you will get the problems related to the users of AI and ML and the different models that you can specify. I, I am using the term mobile because mobile is more famous and more uh, uh, like reachability is there in the remote places as well as villages as compared to laptop or systems. So that's why these uh, uh, TensorFlow type of models are quite famous for the development of such systems where ML and AI used to be implemented. So automatically we are getting two, three problems even our discussion at this moment, which seems to be practically applicable now. Other way around also, there are some problems. Like initially when we were building, the, when we were writing some project or writing some paper, we were, where we were assuming that there will be data collection from the villagers from the remote areas then at that time there was a hurdle that a simple review or comment will be that will you be visiting to every villager for collection of data and how many times you will be visiting there so that's a big problem data collection will be a big problem but nowadays you can always say that no we will gather the data through the internet like they, you will have some app through which the villagers can enter the data on day-to-day -day basis and that analytics and processing can be performed by my server at my place. So automatically your efforts have reduced and the dissemination of, increase, uh, of results has increased. So due to this facility, due to this availability only, there are so many projects which are happening these days. Like even recently you might have seen in the media that uh, some earthquake early warning system was launched by the government in collaboration with IT. So all these were possible because nowadays we are assuming that even in remote areas, we have the reachability to this initiative, right? So ultimately we are gathering data through sensors which are put up at the remote places and those are uh, transferring the data in real time almost real time basis, right? Uh, except the transfer time, 
right so that is uh, that the servers are getting the data constantly we are not doing all these things nowadays on uh, manual basis so that's why this is very important initiative that is helping you in research but we need to think in another way like yes that how it can help us in the different domains right how we can use this another initiative is universal access to so how we can use this this is also a really good initiative but how we can find the opportunities of research now with reference to ai ml nowadays it is very much connected to the previous initiative for for dissemination of your model for dissemination of your results you need one thing one is internet connectivity second is the second is the device to which you are able to disseminate and do the computation now this universal access to mobile connectivity is taking care of both of us one is that through the mobile phones which is accessible nowadays to it the, the overall idea is that through this initiative you will have mobile connectivity at all the different places in the country at the at the remote places as well so nowadays uh, we are so much dependent upon the mobile that even we cannot think of our life in day to day basis without mobile we feel something is uh, uh, there there is some gap if we are not having our mobile phone especially our smartphone in our pocket so due to this uh, revolutionary step which has happened in last decade or due to the smartphone nowadays we can assume that yes we can do the work which can be disseminated through the smartphones and both things that are gathering as well as project uh, accessibility to the remote user is possible so the same things which i specified in the last example like uh, uh, the different projects which requires accessibility from the farmers data input from the farmers are possible uh, like previously you might remember that when you were defending your phd thesis or some presentation of your phd and you are putting up some idea before the panel about 10 15 years back it was it, it was happening in many different project meetings as well somebody is having very good idea uh, but uh, it was said that okay you are uh, your work is not applicable in indian perspective because we can never assume that the common people or the farmers will be having smartphone this is applicable in the other developed countries not in india but this is not the scenario now everyone in our country i i cannot say everyone but most of the people are having this facility so due to this reason only many initiatives of government has happened like fasal bima yojana as well as uh, uh, there is one initiative in some of the states where the crops of every farmer is registered so most of the activities are done through this mobile connectivity and mobile phones smartphones only. so it can be easily considered that yes farmers are having smartphones and automatically there will be so many applications which will come into picture like there can be a project where uh, uh, the farmer is asking about the recommendations for like uh, harvesting or like even in, in like putting up the insecticides in their farm based on the current situation of the crop so there can be such type of system that can be developed for them so automatically a lot of applications of ai and ml will happen in all these cases there are many many other such applications which can happen with the help of this initiative another is public internet access program so through this program basically the internet connectivity is ensured at all the places through even at the gram panchayat level and some common service centers are set up cscs in many gram panchayat it's there right i cannot say in all the examples places but cscs are quite functional and most of the government initiatives are disseminated through the cscs so cscs are set up at the gram panchayat level through which the connectivity at the different villages are possible now through this initiative there are many many uh, multiple benefits here so uh, even 
like you will find that let us consider you want to have a daily routine that are flexing from the villages right so they can give some input on day to day basis at gram panchayat level and that can be gathered from uh, your remote your server your server, server uh, similarly the dissemination of your project information can be from the gram panchayat level and through these csc's you can collaborate with various gram panchayat right and uh, you can build up some good projects around that good papers around that good research work around that i can give some example like uh, uh, there is one project in uh, hydrology department in our institute where uh, the it rudki is connected to various gram panchayat and many times they are calling some of the panchayat pradhan who is uh, who has performed who, whose village has performed very well in that initiative so that is dissemination of the results to gram panchayat and the actions by gram panchayat dependent upon that results similarly the input from the gram panchayat is transferred to the it rudki through csc's right so this is multi way activity that can happen so this is possible only due to the reason that this type of accessibility is there right i can uh, apart from the use of ai and ml i can tell you one more benefit uh, one more example of benefit that has that has that is happened due to the csc in our region like uh, most of you might be knowing that in haridwar and uh, all these places a lot of flowers are used in the temples right so one of uh, our student like uh, he was doing one project with me uh, in the last year but before that also he was very active in the different initiatives to use the technology for the common people so as a lot of flowers are used so at the end of the day there are lot of used flowers which are not very bad in situation like if flower is put up in temple that at the end of at the end of day it's not that like it will be there only for lot of the time so it is picked up by pujari and then at the end of day in that temple there will be many kg of flowers so his initiative was that at the end of day they can submit those flowers to some common place right and from that common place it can be used uh, by some ngos for the uh, agarbatti like as it is a pure flower based agarbatti it will be having very good flavor right instead of having the fra uh, artificial fragrance it will be having the real fragrance so that initiative was very much successful under one of the government initiative it was very much publicized and this project happened uh, ultimately very well and uh, uh, basically then uh, to disseminate this idea to the practical scenario otherwise it was like that at kurki only in one of the room uh, some of the people were doing that so just for the sake of uh, uh, so, uh, as a pilot project but as it was very much working so then it was transferred at the gram panchayat level and uh, through the csc's Uh, the students uh, from the campus were monitoring and mentoring them as per need but at each of the gram panchayat level many of the interested people were uh, gaining something earning something through this uh, initiative so that is the benefit of csc like you can have so many benefits without putting up so much effort without spending so much of time right so th th these are just examples and you will find so many uses that can happen through these initiatives with the help of uh, ultimately the technology and uh, uh, these days data analytics and machine learning another one is like another pillar is e-governance so in e-governance if we look upon there are many initiatives which has happened like form simplification field reduction online application and tracking then there are some problems which are directly related to your domain of work where machine learning is very used like online repositories these days it is very much important initiative from the government side and recently you might have seen a lot of uh, news on these initiatives where it was very much publicized that uh, 
government has put up the online repository for your educational documents or identity documents or other certificates. So in this domain, there is a broad scope of research that you can do the indexing and searching retrieval facility for the documents. Uh, I, I was just reading at some places that initially these documents were put up in the form of images only. So there, then again, there is a lot of scope for this one. But it can be like making them searching, searchable and retrievable. So you can do the auto tagging of images, you can do some work in that direction. Similarly, you can do the, uh, you can build some searching information retrieval system regarding that fast searching and indexing capabilities. Similarly, recently there are a lot of initiatives related to the uh, maintenance and preservation of monumental documents. So in that also a lot of digitization activities will happen. So when these will be maintained and it is happening nowadays even like I have taken wipe of uh, one of uh, the recent PhD student from IIT Delhi, yeah, PhD student or MS student from IIT Delhi. And in that they were doing a lot of work related to that one. So related to Sanskrit and all that. So in those, in all these issues, machine learning and artificial intelligence in broader sense was used to maintain that or to translate this from one language to another language, the monumental documents, right? Or to, uh, to provide the capability to retrieve them or to retrieve them as per the particular uses that only those documents which are useful in that particular scenario are retrieved. Different possibilities and different scope can be there dependent upon the audience. But you need to see that yes, these type of repositories are now being increased, are available, and you can do a lot of research work in this direction. Similarly, there are some initiatives related to UIDI, Aadhaar, Payment Gateway, and all that. So I cannot say that you have accessibility to Aadhaar data or uh, Aadhaar information of the citizens. But ultimately, these can be a learning uh, activities for the undergraduate or postgraduate students. And believe me, like if you are giving this type of activities to students, a lot of new problems will be gathered by them, will be, will be coming to their mind. Like it's, it's, it's a like a well-tested thing. I have seen that like if you are giving some practical thing to student, they are also generating some good results out of that. And many times it is a win-win situation. They are learning from that and you are getting some new problems, right? I have seen it many times, like I, uh, it is not related to AI, but I can give an example. Once I was taking the course of computer networks, So I have just given them a project to some of the students to do the case study of some of the particular project, a particular network, which was already been functional. So after that, they were doing it very well. And at the end of the project, they have put up so many good observations, which were really challenging problem in the area of network. So ultimately we provided those recommendations to that network, like it was just a, a voluntary assessment, right? And that was really helpful to them. So it was a win-win situation for everyone. Like you students were getting new ideas, new, new type of knowledge. They were trying to explore it. And uh, you are learning that, yes, these problems are existing, how the people are tackling that. And uh, the, pro, uh, the network people are getting the, issues and they are able to resolve it. So like similarly, we need to tell them that yes, try to learn this architecture, what issues you are finding in this architecture, what is the scope of improvement, what is the uh, positive thing in that they can learn or they should try to, they, they should tell to others. So among the discussion, there can be so many good things that can be, yeah, that, that can immerse. So apart from that, there is one more pillar, e -crum. Now in e kranti initiative, there are so many things which are useful to me. Like I can tell you that in most of the cases, government is also nowadays in, increasing cloud by default. 
so cloud by default, what it is saying that like even if you are not having so many resources for uh, computation as well as uh, uh, that uh, that memory, then uh, also you can work on the big data as well. So under that initiative, the government is trying to say that try to put up most of your facilities through cloud. So now in this case, what we can assume in your problems that yes, as my project can be put up through cloud, so even I will be able to handle the big projects, big data projects where the data is very large and computation requirement for applying machine learning is very high. So those can also be handled. And by some of the initiatives, by some of the organizations like Microsoft and Amazon, for academic purposes, cloud is available at a very low cost, or in some cases, if you are having some project, you can purchase the cloud points. And through that, you can run many big projects. Like if you are working in the area of agriculture, where ML is used, uh, like or if you are using in the uh, ML-based healthcare, AI-based healthcare system, or AI-based climate changes related work, it requires huge amount of storage as well as computing facilities. So through these initiatives, where the cloud is very much in place, due to the government initiatives only, many uh, private organizations are also helping, you can get the benefit of this. Similarly, nowadays government is saying that whatever project you are building, try to disseminate it through the mobile first. Right? You can have the other platforms as well, but mobile should be first. The reason is, it is basically considered to be a media device which is having more dissemination capability as compared to the other computing devices. So that's why when we are building our projects, try to see whether we can disseminate it to the mobile as well. So automatically some new challenges will happen for your project. One will be to make it computationally sensitive. That yes, it should be having very less computational requirement. Energy efficiency will be a very big issue, which is these days very much handled in IoT-based systems and these mobile-based systems can also it can be a very strong problem. So you will automatically get some challenges in which you can work for the employee. Then another is that nowadays government is also talking about putting up some standards and protocols for everything like we, uh, BIS is very much active these days, even for software development, for the different kind of mobile-based development, standards are put up by the government. And these are not only for Indian government, like most of the standards are taken care at the international level. Some are uh, adopted in India, some are propagated from India. Like recently only I was the part of some standardization authorities like BIS and one of the standards for mobile device security was being taken care of by mighty government of India. So these committees are also very good places to learn. So you can get attached with these committees. Some of them are putting up the standards and protocols in the public domain. <laughs> and many of them remains unexplored and unattended. So you can pick up those problems and try to see how you can help them or how you can work upon them, how you can put up the algorithms or models for them. Like you can find many problems like which are put up there and how these can be automated. Many things in standardization protocol, standardizations are uh, manual. Another is language localization. It is a very big research domain these days. Many people in the India are working in this domain. Like for the English language, so many things have happened in the area of natural language processing where ultimately in text processing, I will say ML is very much used. But nowadays, a lot of research is happening to have the language localized. Like, likewise, the English language, we want to have the different things in our local languages as well, not only in Hindi. It is in Hindi, Sanskrit is like we can be contemporary to Hindi only, or more than that, it can be many regional languages as well, like in Punjabi, in, it can be state-based languages in Bengali, in Tamil. 
and it is happening like many projects and many papers are published in Indian language related works as well in many talk class conferences and workshops. So in this case, automatically the problem arises that yes, there is a model which is available for work, which is working well in the Indian, uh, in the English language documents or English language text. Now you want to build that for the Hindi. So how it is there that yes, whether it can work as it is or targeted to the grammatical issues which are different than the English language in Hindi, how you need to adapt the model. So when you will try for that, automatically you will get so many good problems. And you will find it is being increased these days at a different center, different initiatives of government as well. So you will get some good fund as well as uh, good uh, publications out of this problem, right? Similarly, this national GIS is nowadays very famous. Recently, only one GIS based project from BDA was sanctioned to a, uh, to a professor at IT. And this might happen to many different states now. So this in itself, it's not simply that it is a civil engineering problem in our days. The graphical information system is nowadays have very wide scope and it requires a lot of expertise related to your domain of research where you can find a lot of scope for the usage of machine learning, some soft computing systems, some uh, artificial intelligence related issues, right? We, like in every domain, we are finding those issues. Like we, we, are find, we are able to find out so many problems, right? Security and electronic data preservation. So it is directly related to information security and uh, uh, like and uh, network security. And in ML and AI, you, ML and AI can be huge benefit in the area of information and security for prediction of so many things, for detection of so many issues like malware and all that. Like we are also working in one such project with uh, uh, one of our forum partner. So this can have, is, this, this itself is uh, having a very broad scope. Recently, you can find so many papers where ML has been used for this purpose. Another initiative, information for all. This is in itself a very broad window the broad scope that has opened for research in Indian perspective. Previously, you might remember that about 15, 20 years back, or I, I will not even say 15, 20 years back, about 10 years back, when you were submitting some project like on smart city related activities or a traffic management system, I hope you remember that type of, yeah. Then most of the time, you were saying that, okay, I will use the data from uh, Chicago city. Chicago city data was very famous, right? Or I will use the data or like you are working for a crowdsourcing project or you are working on crime uh, management projects. These, these type of problems were very famous at that time, right? But most of the time you were saying that, okay, crime related data for these cities, Indian city is not available. I will use the Australian data. I will use the Chicago city data. And when you were, you were presenting your idea, the, the reviewers will be saying that, okay, it is not for Indians perspective. So how you can say that your project will work for that? You have trained your model on Chicago city data. Is it applicable in your country? Will, will it be applicable in your place? So that is the big problem. And most of the time, uh, the, the things happened in this way for many years. And then people started to leave that type of uh, domain. And nowadays, even if person is picking up that problem, then it is thought that, oh, this is so many, so much, so much old problems, not a good problem. But see, in many different journals nowadays, those problems are, have been picked up because of the availability of data, good data. At that time, these were not so much could fully handle, but nowadays it can be handled. Now we have open data platform from government of India. Nowadays, the government is saying that whatever work you are doing, 
for all the government initiatives, now data is being kept. Like I recently heard that like one of my students is there in uh, one, one of the other uh, one southern state for the different uh, uh, natural hazards which, which are normally happening in some of the seas of, of the country, the government is maintaining the data related to that. And similarly, many department of country like meteorology departments, many other departments are maintaining the data. So that's why similarly, like in the COVID time itself, you can see nowadays data is very well, it is at least maintained. We can say that it is not a noiseless data. It's very noisy. We, can, we need about data, we need about data handling, but at least we have the data which can be processed to make it good for applying in sea level. So recently due to this reason, I can see many theses which has happened I was the part of their committee on the Indian cities data like Kanpur city data I have seen. Similarly for many other cities it has happened. So automatically like even you will see that like if everybody in the world is talking about Chicago city data, then its uh, publication uh, scope will also be reduced. But as new data is happening from the India itself, then the scope is very high. It's something new which has happened in the last decade and people have picked up and putting up the Indian perspective to their problem and published in the international arena. So this is a very good and strong initiative which is happening in the country. Right? So you can use it for many ML related problems, right? Similarly, this is a little bit off with national policy on electronics. This was also announced two years back and uh, it is uh, now very much uh, having the scope for improvement as well as observations. It was put up uh, to the many academic institutions. We also got the email from government that how is that all right or what changes we should do in that before launching or finalizing it. So you can go through these documents and you will find that yes, what is the overall scope of the activities in which the government is interested and what they are actually planning to do in the future. And automatically you will get so many good research problems to work. Many good problems will be available there. So I will encourage you to go through those places, these documents which are available and you will find many good problems. Another initiative of government is early harvest program. So in this project, in this initiative, there are so many small projects, but ultimately so much good scope for the usage of machine learning models. Like uh, IT platform for messages, government greetings to be given. These are uh, system development related projects. One initiative is biometric attendance. I hope uh, this is uh, known to all. In most of the places, it is very well implemented. So we might not be having the biometric data of the users with the security reasons, but we can imitate that data. And for this system, we can propose some challenging issues in this one and we can uh, propose the solutions to make it more efficient right by immediating the biometric data so automatically this will have direct uses for the, the for the, the, the this initiative which is very well working similarly secure email within government Your email within the government is fine but now security is also there so in that also ML can be used like prediction of the potential threats or potential intrusion or potential issues in the email system or all that dependent upon the signature or dependent upon the uh, different uh, malicious activities that might happen that might be happening on the network traffic. So that type of work is very much famous like our, some of our students also did such type of work as a part of their VTEC project last year, All right? So similarly, SMS with weather forecasting or weather information, disaster alert itself is a very big domain of work in which AI and ML as well as IOTs is used these days. Landslide prediction, 
itself is a big project from the Himalayan region, which uh, which which is being taken care of in uh, in uh, uh, collaboration with Uttarakhand government. And some projects are working on that. A lot of publications are happening in that. Time. A lot of theses are happening. Like uh, there there is some uh, agencies in Uttarakhand, Uttarakhand disaster management authorities. They have they have so many issues related to the disaster and weather in which you can contribute with the help of machine learning. So many problems are there, like you can get in touch with them. Like many of you might be from Uttarakhand, right? So they can uh, directly get in touch with them. Even we will be happy to collaborate. We did two projects with the uh, Uttarakhand Disaster Management Authority, right? And they were really good and very successful projects, right? So uh, they, they are having some good projects and good problems where you are able to contribute with the help of these new technologies, right? There are some DI initiatives as well, like Aadhaar, Dhar Enable Payment System, Agri Market Act, Bharat Broadband Network, Bheem Center of Excellence in IoT, Sir Team, like this is very active these days, otherwise it was almost like previously in India. Crop Insurance Mobile App, Swat, Cyber Swachta Kendar, directly related to security and malware analysis center, which is directly having the uses of ML as well. Similarly, crop insurance mobile app, the crop insurance work in itself is having so much uses of ML if you are trying to explore. One of our project was oriented to that, which was shown to have the uses of ML. So it was led by some other faculty. I was copying in that project. And later on, we got when national level project in which me and we both were PI. And uh, that project got the national level due to the reason that we, that we built an app. Most of that work was done by our students. And that app can be helpful in crop insurance activity to automate it and to have the false data, to, to detect the false data if it is submitted by the crop owners. So, which is a very big issue, I believe you might be knowing in all the different places in the country. Like even if uh, your crop is doing well and you are asking for the insurance coverage or insurance claim. So those issues might happen. So if, if these type of applications based on you, the uses of AI and ML can help the government authorities in taking care of all these issues, right? So these are some of the problems, direct problems in you can work on, right? Some similar DZ locker, digital AMS, which is quite working very well. DBT, GEM, uh, government e-marketplace, everybody is working on that. So in this also, you can do a lot of ML related work. Like it is very similar to the e-marketplace, uh, which is not owned by government like Amazon and all these, and they are using a lot of ML for their efficiency. So you can propose so many projects within that to make it more efficient. Like Koya Paya, MyGOB, NKN, Passport Seva Kendra, Smart City in itself is a very big project. Very, very big domain of work in which everything is related to, most of the things are having the uses of ML. Like I will take a very small example to explain this one later on in my slide. Right, so all these issues are ultimately very helpful and I hope uh, you might have got a lot of problems, a lot of scope for research in all these applications in which the machine um, learning can be useful. Right, so if any one of you is uh, interested to tell me any other problem in which you are, uh, you, you are working and you find that yes, these problems can be further explored with the help of ML and some of the problem domains in which you are working, which are really unique. You can please tell, you can share your views, anybody. Because I see that as a teacher, if you are trying to explore these technologies, it will be helpful to you to get the knowledge of new initiatives. And it will be helpful to the students because you will be imparting the knowledge. At least you will be igniting their mind to acquire the knowledge for the new technologies. And as a researcher, you will automatically get some new project ideas. And you will also find uh, the scope for applying various projects for the funding. So in both the situations, exploring these initiatives and these uh, technologies and these, uh, these uh, different domain of work can be helpful.
and to these two rocks. Right. So now we can see. Yes, uh, uh, I would. I I will correlate these things now with how the practically we should try to do these issues. So if anybody, any participant, any faculty member want to say something, you are most welcome. <clears throat> like if you have some problem domain in which you try to apply the ML, right? Or you are exploring it, then you can share with the other faculty members. It will be really helpful to the others as well. Yes, any other fact, any faculty member, any student or faculty member, any participant. Okay, not a problem. Okay, so I will continue my discussion now. Okay, we can see that what ultimately is happening. Am I audible? Yes. Anybody can tell me. Am I audible? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. You are audible, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, that is the side effect of online teaching that we are not able to know that whether somebody is listening to you or not. Okay, anyway. So as I was discussing about the various applications, opportunities to which uh, we can explore the AI and ML related activities, I, as, I, I discussed it uh, very extensively, I hope. Now, the thing is that most of the time when we are working on such projects, then we are not thinking about the complete system in which our project will work, our, our software will work. We normally think about a particular small module in which we are doing the research and don't think about or leave the other modules or the complete system in which your project or your system have. And that causes a problem. That ultimately causes problem. You might have seen many times that you are submitting some work for publication. Your system was working well, it was generating some good results. But when the I'm talking about some good places only, good journals or good conferences only, and the reviewers will be exploring it so much in detail that they are putting so many comments that uh, the paper is rejected, and you are also surprised that my system was so well. How these comments have and the, the major theme of the comment you will find might be that yes, your system itself in isolation will be good, but already there are so much many other systems which are working in this way. So how your system is in line with those systems? It is contradicting with the existing systems. It is due to the reason why it happened. We did a lot of effort in our work, but we forget about the other systems in which my system has to work. So it is due to the reason that we, uh, I am not telling, telling you my views, a very different perspective of looking upon the problems. Instead of looking them in isolation, try to see that how the complete system is working. So it will not only make your system in compatibility with the other system, but it will also help you to have some new challenges which can be worked upon and your scope of research will increase. So these, these type of com these complete systems which are working can be called as software intensive systems. So from that perspective, we need to think. Basically, if you look upon the definition of software intensive system, we can call a so system to be a software intensive system. That system is very much influenced to a large extent, the design, construction, deployment, and evolution of the system is very much influenced by the software. Like in any system, like the true benefit of your work is obtained in most of the cases when it is working along with some hardware. In very least, a very in, in, in minimal scenario, it will be installed on some hardware itself. Then only your system is software is useful. Where, wherever you have applied the artificial intelligence or machine. 
so there are so many systems where uh, i can give the examples like uh, smart grid systems wireless ad hoc systems telecommunication systems automatic embedded systems air traffic control systems and a very simple soft system in your house is automatic washing machine so all these systems are just example of software intensive systems your intensity of the software is dominant like you can see that with time what happened previously hardware were dominant and most of the functionality if if a system is performing 100 functionality out of 100 functionalities 80 were performed with the help of hardware 20 with the help of software now it just for an example i am telling not exact nowadays the scenario is little bit different nowadays softwares are dominating in most of the scenario hardware is providing a basis to run the software and almost all the activities are having intervention with the help of software which you have embedded on that system so due to that reason you will find that in this type of system it's not only a single software module which is working it's basically many software modules which are working in interaction with each other so we need to firstly understand i will not say to go to the entry cases of every sub system but to understand what are the other sub systems in which my ai based application will be embedded or will be working then only you will be able to build a proper system and it will also help you to achieve good results and good problems can be handled so like you can see if you will look upon so it is a very very different perspective of thinking about handling the machine learning based problem. you can see that the standard is available a triple 42010 which is related to a software intensive system so if you will look upon the standard in detail then you will find so many good things so software intensive systems are systems in which software development and or integration are dominant considerations means ultimately software is dominant and most of the systems that you are looking upon these days where the machine learning based models are working most of them are complex systems and they are software intensive systems so in a very minimal scenario when hardware is very less or nil even then it is covered under this category like it is 100% dominance of software if it is only so so all the products where the software will be involved will be almost covered under software intensive systems so it is talking about the big systems only so all the large software systems like systems of systems or software product lines all these will be covered under system so i will tell you to at least go through the basics of sis modeling and automatically you will be able to write your paper in better way and also to think about the broader perspective of your problem before doing the work and that will give you so give you so many good ideas for the improvement and betterment of it ultimately what happened otherwise like as you can see from this image which is shown on the screen that you might be building some good work quality of work is fine as its efficiency is okay but when it is integrated with the other system or when it is interfaced with the other system then it's not compatible and what is the result overall zero and that is one of the big issue these days in many of the research works that most of the time students starts to work in isolation and then the comments are happening and these comments are little bit different even out of the scope of your work you are saying that how it is related to my work and reviewer might be interested to see that yes this work is okay but how it is in correlation with the other work which is already available why why everybody anybody would like to rework the things which is already famous or established so in those cases that this type of problem and comments will happen so for try to see firstly the overall system so that is the first step when you want to work in this domain first identify the domain then identify that yes out of this complete system like you can see from this figure this is the overall system in which it is there 
like if it is a smart city system then in that there are so many small systems or some system element which cannot be further decomposed then that system is further having some systems then it is having further some systems and so on then you might be interested to work in this system like if it is a smart city and in this smart city one system might be to have the prediction about the uh, like one system can be air, air traffic control system this is very important big system itself so you might be working in this one but you might be ignoring all other then the comments will be might have come that yes your system might be working fine but how it is it is working along with the system which is already there and within the air traffic control system also there can be sub systems you might be working only this one so how this will be integrated with the others so we need to understand this firstly it will not take much of efforts so firstly decide the domain then within domain try to see what are the other systems to which my system will be integrated then you might be having very brief discussion about all these and then you will get the overall idea that yes my system has to discuss has to work with this type of input and has to generate the output which will be used by the other system in this way so i will have to modify my system my approach in such a way that it is compatible with the others then you will uh, change your design in the, in that way and then you will build your system then you will write your so in this way if you are working the chances of success will be similarly if you will look upon the software intensive system it is also having hardware components not only so rarely though but many in many cases like if you are talking about some consumer electronics related works in those cases it might happen that there are comments that yes this is fine but this hardware platform is there do you think that this will be working your approach will be working on this platform or on those devices so whenever you are talking about some system then also think that to which hardware it need to be integrated on which it will be working on which it will be embedded so we need to think about that and then do our work right so these software configuration items as well as hardware configuration items need to be taken care why this is so important i can tell you very simple example this figure i have taken from one of our work published in itrpl consumer electronics so you can see it is a very simple example of city tour planner service so the scenario is like that that anybody is coming to let us consider dehradun city or nainital anybody is coming to nainital so it's a big city right so however nainital is having same type of geographical locations and almost same weather but as it is a hill area so weather might be a little bit different at different places so i am assuming that in this example so any person is visiting that person want that my visit should be planned in such a way that in a time of 2 hours that i have for today i can visit maximum possible number of places so for that this system will take some constants as input right and it will tell you that this should be the route that you should follow and on real time it can also change the route dependent upon the crowd or weather condition in the different routes right so it might be using even this small system in a smart city concept might be using so many different technologies like it can be it can be using the crowd management system traffic management system uh, traffic alert system or crowd alert system depending on the time of the day weather alert system or weather sensors at the different places that is telling you the real time scenario what is there at the different places and so many small systems will be working in coherence with each other to generate the overall objective so i just want to tell that yes even in this small system there are so many sub systems and they have to work in coherence with each other then only they are able to achieve the overall objective but if you are working for any complex problem you might be handling just small part of this one but the overall system in which you have to work might be very complex system 
so in those cases you need to just understand firstly what the overall system is doing and where my system is lying and then try to see your problem then it will give you better results right so that's the overall thing that i want to tell you similarly like you are working for smart grid so it is related very much related to electrical otherwise but you can see i am just telling you the different cases in which you can work and try to see like in this case you can see that however grid systems are very much handled by the electrical people but nowadays the smartness in the smart grid is very much enabled with the help of lot of scope for the use of machine learning is there in this smart grid ultimately the smartness is enabled with the help of an additional infrastructure layer on the existing grid architecture where the different devices like generator and consumer and devices are connected iot devices are placed in this smart meters and cloud uh, or we can say sort of sensors are placed on this smart meter uh, in this smart meters right and uh, uh, they are communicating the devices are communicating with the help of sensors and in that process lot of data is generated so due to that reason in itself a new domain of work come into picture smart grid analytics right so it has been found that if this data is analyzed then lot of good information is generated right and that can be used to have the better grid optimization customer engagement can be better cost reduction has been achieved operational efficiency is better and even the better integration of renewable energy resources with the traditional energy resources can be achieved right so like you can have so many good benefits if you are like even terabytes of data has been found like due to this communication and second to second basis the data is obtained right so it is a big domain of work that can be explored right? so you will see that all the levels you are finding the problems like because data is now it is so much uh, available and generated in network information security also you can get the use of ml in uh, uh, like weather prediction in traffic prediction in prediction of traveling time based on the time of the traffic management in web services integration and composition in iot related works in sensor related works in all these activities you can find the usage of machine learning so there is a lot of scope ultimately and methodology that i have specified can be really helpful to frame your problem in very very fruitful and useful way now one thing that is really important in this case is that whenever you are talking about the data then it is not a good idea to just randomly pick the technique and keep the data as black box it is it should be avoided it's not it's not a good approach of doing that data analytics for machine learning applications should be very systematic you should follow the systematic methodology in this case also right i will not go into the detail of systematic methodology i will tell you some of the steps that one should follow however it is known to all but normally we skip those things what happened most of the time many times what you will see students will be doing the work they are uh, uh, applying so many different machine learning techniques then they are saying that no sir we are not getting the good results so leave this data okay we will try some other work so in this process a lot of time is spent or years are spent you know and at the end of the day there is nothing that we can gain so one of the major reason for this one is that basically most of the time the data is not analyzed directly you are picking up the data and randomly applying some techniques firstly we need to see the data as a white box not as a black box what actually the data is what are the different attributes what is the relationship between the different attributes whether the data is having some missing values some noise we need to look upon all these things after that only we should proceed further 
and once that is done then we need to see what is the type of data so in that type of data this type of technique will be better what is the size of data for that size of data this technique will be more suitable whether there is imbalance in data set whether there are chances of overfitting what type of methodology i should follow what type of parameter should i set if all these things are kept in mind already and we had given a good consideration to all these things then there are very high chances that you will get the results as expected so all these things are normally not taken care of very well by the uh, students or researchers and that causes a lot of uh, rework and which is a very big problem right so ultimately ml requires that and if we are not thinking about the data we are just keeping it as a raw data without looking upon what type of data it is what is the uses of this one how uh, what type of matrix it is being used for measurement then there is no ultimate good results as well you might even see that in the data that you have some of the part might be in kilometer let us consider distance is attribute some might be in meter and you expect that your model will work fine we we need to understand the data if there is a problem you can identify like the example that i have given to you you might find that in many of the cases the value is missing how you can expect the good results so all these issues first you need to be understood they should be on same time scale they should be on same measurement scale and then similarly they should have all the different values many different things are there that you have to think about before trying to apply the data you can refer any of the literature which is handling the data pre processing issues and you will find so many things that we need to take so due to this reason in itself data science is a big domain of work it's not now a small uh, set of methodology in itself it is an engineering domain in itself right ai and ml where uh, a parallel methodology of uh, implementation is happening as a, in parallel to the traditional programming methodologies and data science is not just requiring the use of machine learning it requiring the uses of big data methodologies how to develop the software you should have the knowledge of programming languages and you should also have the good knowledge of statistical methods so that's why so many different subjects should be known to apply properly the the, the data science and machine learning there is a, a very small difference Uh, and uh, i will try to tell you like in this case in the traditional programming what is happening you are having a program you are building a program you are giving some input to this program and this program is performing the computations and generating the output this is the traditional in machine learning what are you doing you have some input you can say it independent variable which you are using learning and you also know the output by using the input and output you are generating a model which is finding out the relationship between input output the pattern or the relationship is generated then you are using this model to generate the output for some in unknown in so this is the difference between two models in this you are giving the input to a program and generating output in this you know this is the output for the input you are using this knowledge to generate a model and then using this model for generating the output for some unknown so in this case output is a model learned model right so that is the difference and it is very near to the human being like you might have heard about or you will be learning in the remaining four days about many different machine learning methodologies like association rule mining or association is one of the strong fundamental in data mining so in human life also in our day to day basis activities also we are using association you if you will try to correlate 
the different fundamentals to the human being, you will find many similarities. This is my last point that I will be discussing with all of you. Like we know, like uh, in most of the books of data mining and machine learning, you will see that one example is given that if a customer is uh, purchasing bread, then there are high chances that that customer will also purchase the butter. It is also very near to the human intuition. Like if anybody is, you will find that even on most of the e-commerce websites, this association is used. Like if you are purchasing something, many of the items which are used with that are recommended automatically to you. So it is also very near to human being. A shopkeeper is also knowing here, if you have purchased the source, then you might also be interested in some other item which is related to this. Similarly, pattern mining or pattern prediction, pattern generation, not prediction, pattern generation is also related to human analogy. Like uh, uh, if a person is working every day, if a person is walking to uh, uh, some park every day at 6 p.m., uh, right? And you know that person that since many years this person is doing in this way that firstly he is at 5 p.m. he is playing, then at 6 p.m. this person is walking, then at 7 p.m. this person is returning to his pass. So you know that tomorrow at around 6 p.m. where you will find person X. You know that yes, at 6 p.m. I will find the person X working in the park. So this is also a pattern that has been generated in your brain due to the day-to-day -day activities that has been observed by the brain. So this is also pattern generation. So dependent upon these fundamentals, only many algorithms are there. You will just have to understand these algorithms from that perspective. Take a very simple example. This is my last discussion with you. Simple example. Uh, you might be, uh, uh, you might have heard about push button pen, tick tick pen. So uh, even if uh, you are not, uh, you are using that pen since many years, right? So your body and your brain is habitual of listening about the tick tick of your pen. So if you are not even looking upon someone in an office and somebody is doing tick tick of that pen, then you will be able to identify that yes, this is that tick tick pen. This noise is related to this. So you are able to do that because a pattern has been generated in your brain corresponding to that noise, that voice. Now consider the scenario that due to some problem, uh, unfortunately, one of the ear of that person is now not working, right? So now what will happen? Your brain, if somebody is making that tick tick, then you might be able to, that person might be able to understand that yes, this is the voice of tick tick pen, but might not be able to identify from which side this voice is coming, right? Or might not be able to identify if it, this pen is of same brand that I used to use. The, what is the reason for that missing information? During the testing phase now, I am getting to machine learning. During the testing phase now, some data is missing. One of the ear is gathering the data, another is not gathering, so some data is missing. Same thing might happen during the training also. Right, so in this way, you can find the relationship between the various machine learning methodologies and the human capabilities, human working. And that's why many of the models in machine learning are increased from the human processing, like neural networks based models. They are very much working in line with that one. Right, so there are so many applications these days you can explore for machine learning. Like Google is also using, you can view their different works, knowledge graphs are available, Uber, so many systems, so many systems are there. So this is the overall process, collecting data, data regulating. I have discussed this in detail, analyzing. So many times during the analysis only, you will find some good results. Then you are able to apply some model which might be very much suited to your work. Then testing, then report. So if you are following these steps in very proper way, then you will be getting the expected results, right? So Python is also helping in many of these, some good libraries are available, right? And I hope uh, these topics will be covered in detail 
by the different faculty members, different speakers in the uh, different uh, lectures from today onward, right? So you can understand these things from very little, like very little discussion on the human analogy, like pain is estimable, very near to the human analogy, how the human beings are working, right? Reinforcement learning, supervised learning, all these are very much related to the human being, right? Another thing that we normally miss is data visualizers. In many cases, if the data is complex, before processing and using the data, visualization of data through different charts, graph, even can give very good results, good analytics can be generated. So it is making the data more understandable, right? So there are some libraries for that, some tools are available, data visualization tools like Tableau and all that, that can really help you in getting some good results and some good understanding of data. And that can really help you to find out the issues that you can work upon and then apply the machine learning, appropriate machine learning, right? So if you have anything to discuss, please tell me any question like uh, the remaining 15, 20 minutes is to just handle your questions. Yes, please. Any question, anything? And it is a platform for discussion. Like if you have anything to share, you can share with your knowledge with all of us. And I hope all of us, any, everyone will be benefited. If any audience wants to ask any question to Professor Sandeep sir, so please. Ashtoji. Yes, sir. So please ask them to raise their hands because they cannot mute themselves. Okay, okay. Uh, please raise your hands. If you have any query from your side, so please raise your hands to this platform. Even you can share your thoughts. Even if there is no question, you can share your thoughts and that might be really beneficial to the others. Uh -huh. I really believe in many cases I have seen that people from different domains were attending they and can... they, they specified many good problems that can be useful to the others and they find some good collaborators. But they can ask uh, their question through chat box also. Right, right. Right, Rajeshji? Yes, yes, chat box is working very well. Uh -huh. I think uh, either they have understood everything and there are, they are waiting for the other lectures so that they, they are able to correlate the things with them and get some new results or there is nothing. I don't know. <laughs> so it normally happens. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think that this is drawback of this virtual platform. Yeah, also. that's, that's true. That's true. <laughs> In face to face. Uh, yeah, uh, there are so many discussions which are happening. Uh, going on. Yes. So, uh, uh, thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, I think you have covered lots of topics and you have covered this e Kranti open data platform, early harvest program, e marketplace like smart city, software intensive system, data visualization tool, smart grid analytics, human and analogy. I think you have covered all the topics related to this um, uh, particular topic. Uh, and sir, you have uh, uh, given one uh, interesting example. Uh, suppose uh, um, uh, a person working on the park or listening some particular type of music. So machine learning automatically creates algorithm inside our brain. So I think right. this is a really very new example or we all, maybe uh, it can happen, some people have done some work. But sir, you have told me this in this way. There are many examples that you have given. They are very interesting examples. So, uh, sir. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. All these are really good things people can do. Some of this, in a little detail, if you explain it, sir, I think that this is very beneficial to 
all participants we all yes 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 hmm. yeah we will be happy to discuss these things further in detail not a problem yes sir. as far as uh, uh, the point of discussion as of now is concerned hmm. the basic point basic intention of discussion uh, for human analogy was that uh, basically our brain is also a learning system okay. and the algorithms that our brain is following if, like it's a really different domain of work we are computer engineers and most of the time we are not thinking about the cognitive systems that how they are working how the human cognitive system is working mm -hmm. so if we are trying to understand that many times many new problems it's a, it's, a, it's a, it can be complete mathematical modeling from the human brain working system to the learning models that we are building and from that many of the researchers can get a very new idea that yes i should follow these steps or i should do these things to my model to fine tune it as per the need so that's why i had the, taken that example like if we are uh, we we are having a push button pen then it is having different type of noise like tick tick pen right and uh, we are habitual of that so even if uh, we, are, we we are using this pen for even uh, for six months then our brain is able to make a pattern and the, this brain research is very much famous these days like for this eeg signal and all that that how the patterns are built how the things are working the biological systems are working so similarly in this case we can learn uh, in this way that the brain is getting the information through eyes and through ears so these are the sensors in our system and when we are getting complete information our brain is trained so that is the training process and in sometimes after 6 month if somebody is using that tick tick pen even if we are not looking upon that person we are able to identify that yes this noise is from the tick tick pen that particular pen uh, uh, if, if we are using that push button pen yes sir so that is the testing phase of our system so during which our trained model in the brain is doing the prediction so this is possible because we are able to put the enough information during the testing phase now consider the scenario that during the testing phase or during the time we want to identify the noise uh, let us consider unfortunately one of our ear is not working well so in that case we might be able to identify that this is the noise of the tick tick pen but we will not be able to identify that from which direction the voice is coming so that is the significance of missing information in the training testing process of machine learning just like the human brain many times students miss that part like that this is not a significant thing but the accuracy of the model will be very dependent on the missing so all the different issues like noise redundant data missing values scale of the data all these are directly correlatable with the human psychology human work human brain work so i will just tell all the participants to try to understand these things and you will get so many good things uh, uh, that how to use these models in practice that's all thank you thank you thank you sir thank you very much uh, thank you, really dr gopal and dr kavita as well yes sir okay yes. thank you thank sir. you sir uh, thank you sir uh, really you have uh, enlightened enlightenment over all the participant and we all uh, in all aspects of uh, this uh, advances of artificial intelligence and machine learning for society development really uh, milestone for us your lecture is really milestone for us so thanks again sir for giving and sparing so much time uh, for this uh, fdp and really thanks again sir thank you professor ashok thank you sir okay thanks, thanks to thank all you. of you for listening uh, and uh, sparing your time thank uh, you thank you sir and and, and at the end of day Uh, thanks to my colleagues uh, dr gopal dr uh, balam sir 
and our uh, Dr. Jitain Pande sir, Rajesh ji, Bhubu Kanpal ji and other team, uh, they are, whole day they are helping in this FDP and they are doing very hard for this FDP. Thanks, uh, thanks once again. So tomorrow uh, we will be back in at uh, 9 a.m. sir. So, so I request all the participants to please connect uh, at 8 55 at least at 8 55 and uh, from 9 o'clock we will start the session the first session will be taken by professor mayank agrawal and professor mayank agrawal is um, uh, in uh, the department of computer science and engineering Gurukul kangri university Haridwar, who is expert of blockchain and ai so, so. so thank you all participants for this uh, day long uh, athletic sessions for being with us and attendance we uh, i have already informed you that attendance is an important condition for this uh, fdc so 80 percent attendance is required for this so you have to be in this FDC. okay professor ashutos i will okay, leave sir. now okay sir thank you thank you very much okay thank you thank you sir Ra rajesh Jesus.